without further ado, read only memories. Mid boss presents her presence. Neo San Francisco, twenty sixty four AD. The world thrives on a constant flow of groundbreaking technology. Cybernetic augmentation and genetic modification allow the repair and enhancement of almost any part of a human body. Millions of people jack into virtual worlds every day to work, play, and connect with one another with advanced spring to machine technology. Easier access to genetic modification leaves hybrids walking the streets, looking less human every day. Oh. However, some can't keep up with the fast pace changes around them. Okay. Who's they? Relationship organizational managers are compiled with virtual intelligence and can seem human-like in their interactions. But despite the marketing type and their goal, they are only brainless machines. Well, duh. Organizations like the Human Revolution seek to slow the relentless pace of progress, fearing that unchecked technology will make us lose the very things that make us human. High above the rising tension below, a parallax engineer has blurred the line even further. High above the tension and rising this, below. Humanity's destiny will be altered forever. Ooh. I'll check that out. I'll stop mocking the game and we let's have some fun. Some good, clean fun. Okay, it said press button twice to skip, but I don't want to skip something if there's actually something that's... Oh. Okay, well that's cool. Man, I'm so anxious to get at chomping at the bit on this one. Twelve twenty. Home sweet home. Okay, well, maybe not so sweet. I, I beg to differ. I mean, maybe by twenty sixty four Neo San Francisco standards, this might not be so sweet. But let's be honest, this place looks pretty well organized, pretty tidy, with one little exception there. I don't know, this looks pretty cool. Musty. Well, okay. Maybe, maybe 2564, that will be considered musty. Lappy. Oh, that's good old Lappy. Might not be the most powerful, or the fastest, or have the best screen, but, well, it works. Let me turn the music down a mite. Uh, actually, if I can hit the... yeah. I'm gonna touch the... this is really unusual. Um, but I'm gonna turn down the music a touch with respect to everything else. Let's continue. All right, um, can I talk to the Lappy? Looking pretty hot there, Lappy. Like, literally hot. Overheating, as usual. Okay, can we boot up the Lappy? It's a bit of a relic. Huh. When I saw that at the top there, I thought that said like O L D E, which would be ye old lappy. 
Um, I'm curious what that all means up there. I have an article due tonight. Better finish it before bed. Eh, whatever. What's in our inbox? My inbox. A hell, so terrifying. So specific and personal. That no other living thing should dare enter. Luckily, you're the only person with the password. Oh, are you kidding? We're in 2064 and I'm still using passwords? We're screwed. Alright. Um, okay today's Neo SF's most beloved morning show. All about news and entertainment. People in Neo Oklahoma are still confused by the name Okay Today. This is the show's online newspaper called The Scanline. It's usually about feel-good news, but it does focus on serious current events at times as well. Okay. This is Lips Live, the premier online video network. It's like a mesh of all active streams. Fine, fine, we'll look at journal logic. It's not the fanciest, but it's a word editor. Um, I prefer Notepad, thank you. Just kidding. Oh, check that out. Current event, current headline, story about the human revolution. Oh. Um, okay, let's read it. Human revolution remains vigilant and stay human. Protests in upper market. December 19th. The Human Revolution is on day 10 by the protesting outside various genus clinics around the city, including those in the East Bay and down the peninsula. Genus, the gene splicing treatment facility, has been met with much controversy since the organization reached mainstream exposure over the past few years. Genus employee Mort Crane spoke to OK Today exclusively. According to him, most genus workers are up in arms claiming they are being terrorized in their own city. We're here to help people who need gene therapy for their own personal reasons, whatever they are, said Crane. Individual rights have always been of paramount importance to us, and we believe that our customers have the right to live as they please or require. The human Revolution stands behind their claim that genus is diluting the human experience by providing hybrids with gene splicing treatments. The group feels that the goals stated by Genus, in addition to newer cybernetic technology, are warping humanity into a very scary, dark future. They're playing God in the most senseless of ways. We were born human. Who are we to mess with our genes and start protests, uh, start turning everybody into who knows what? Asked one protester. Who asked to remain anonymous? Hey, sub Blaze. Um, just playing this new game. It's ridiculous and scary. It's not human. More information to follow as the story develops late into the holiday 24, 2064 season. June Valmarana. Charlie Nova. Hey, it's Charlie Nova, host of Star in the Stratosphere. Oh, God. In the stars, join Ryan D. Jossio and the Hassie Boy. For our 10th annual TMI New Year's Eve special, where I'll interview some of the hottest celebrities and find out what their plans are for 2065. Tune in or join us live at Union Square for the big show, starting at 10 p.m. 10 p.m.? So, if I get this article written, maybe I can join them down there. Sports. Uh, well, okay, what are sports like these days? The Neo... Neo SF's 49ers Quest for 10 is back on. Sunday's big game brings an important question to everybody's mind. Can the 49ers punch their ticket to the playoffs and bring the Lombardi Trophy back to Neo SF? It would mark the first such win since their move to a new candlestick after almost 50 year hiatus from the city. Since returning, they've had disappointing losses to the New York Giants and the Mexico City Luchadores. They have brought on a fresh coach with controversy surrounds their quarterback, Patricia Lopez, as some vocal sports fans continue to accuse her of illegal cybernetic enhancements. Certain modifications of implants are banned by the League, but their official reports state that their repeated investigations to Lopez found no evidence to substantiate these rumors. It's relevant to point out that Lopez is the first woman to ever be the quarterback in a major football team. 
49ers look to reclaim their top spot since their last win with their Super Bowl LXXIX victory over the Tokyo Titans. Sunday's game is a bitter match, and the winner secures a spot in the playoffs between our Neo SF 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. It'll be a close game, to say the least. Catch Sunday's results here first. Is June writing all of these? That's a lot of writing, if so. Uh, vandalism on the rise. Reports show that the local foodie booth, JJ's Froyo Stand, was destroyed last night in what appears to be another case of a rogue ROM communicating an act of vandalism. Oh, sure, blame the machine. The cart was um, evidently attacked and damaged by a large ROM that had no shell. Witnesses state the alleged perpetrator has randomly been peering at night before lumbering back into the nearby trees at the western side of the park. This is the first case of a ROM being reported to live on its own in the wild as a stray. People's police say that tracking down a potential owner of the ROM would be likely impossible. Okay, what's the point of this? They have been framed by vandals who set their crime deliberately to make it appear like it were carried out by the ROM. I mean, ultimately, if you think the ROM actually did it, if you think a rob robot's out there causing crimes, by all means, impound the robot. It's not a person. There's no way. Yeah. I mean, Parallax is obviously going to deny the claim. Um, businesses want to be able to file insurance claims is one dimension of this, but more likely than not, it's probably just a vandal out having some fun um, messing with a robot and using that robot to mess with the store. Also, who's making the accusation that Parallax is making these bad ROMs? Okay, that was a pretty sad story. Alright, let's go back. Um... Let's check the inbox. Man, so much mail. Spam, scam, bill. Your account is past due in the amount of 1396.4 credits. Failure to restore your account may result in termination of service. Ah, choice between food or electricity. Well, electricity, of course. Um, lead editor for WTF Sounds. Okay, they're looking for talent. Uh, they give me great exposure. And if they like my stuff, they might maybe consider giving me some credits. <laughs> Don't they know people die of exposure? Spam. Get cheap trash. Only 99 credits for 30 days. Supply to 12 stims. Hello there, I am Princess Emma Thomas. Yes, THE Princess Emma, heiress to the digital empire of the horse fortune. I write to you today, as I need your help to secure my great fortune. You see, it has become frozen, and I need to transfer it to at least five different accounts, or the World Bank will seize my credits, amounting to 420.194.194.1. Please, if you could, send your personal credit ID marker to me immediately so that I may send you 20% of the fortune. I'll only require that you send half back upon receipt of the funds. You may keep the rest of the money. The best part? There's literally nothing that can go wrong. <laughs> so grab yourself some Vegemite and welcome to the... Oh. Ah. Okay, I wonder if Vegemite was a deliberate choice. There's a recent story, uh, anyway, but um, about a person who was dealing with a scammer. And the person said, you know, I think we're going to make this big. And this has been, like, after dealing with the scammer for a very, very long time, and this long, drawn-out conversation. He's like, dude, you know, when the scam's successful, I'm just going to invest it all in Vegemite. So there's no way that this is a reference to that. But if it were, that'd be funny. What is this email? Well, you know, it's a scam. Rent. According to this email, your rent's nearly due. Better get that article submitted soon. A coupon for five credits on a... Ooh, nice. 
Dude, can I print that out? I want a Hassie now. Let's see the lighting ceremony of the tree downtown from your friends at Dr. Trisha Lay. DDS. Why would your dentist invite you to a lighting ceremony? Why not? Dentists have pretty disappointing lives. Of course they'd want to go out and see a lighting ceremony. Uh, vintage tech. Popular pieces this week. The King of Click, a retrospective on classic Model N. Oh, dude. Wait, what? No, I don't want to unsubscribe. I don't have a choice, do I? No, okay, so my only other option was to pause. I want this newsletter. Oh, okay, cool. Spiffy. Um, yeah, let's go back. Lips Live. You can watch a live instantaneous feed from almost anywhere in the world. Um, yeah, it's a pretty silly name for a service. Walls are paper thin. <laughs> Wait, I don't get to choose what I watch? Okay. Fine. Um, journal logic. Well, its last update had some nice stability and performance improvements. Plus, the default write margin is at least half an inch wider now. Wait. Oh, okay, now as a writer, that's a positive thing. So that's less writing I have to do. Just make my margins wider. Before you can review the GX Ultra Beats, you must become one with the GX Ultra Beats. Where'd you put those damn headphones, anyway? No, can't I just, like, fabricate an article? Oh, fine. Yeah, if I fail this, it means I'm a robot, guys. But, not to worry. I'm totally gonna pass. It's a book. It's Wigfield. Sometimes the old books are the best. Particularly to keep the window propped open. Wait. Let's talk to the book. You give the book a pep talk. Keep that window open. Hold your position. Don't lose focus. It's not even doing reps. How about the books on the shelf? You picked this slacker? All right. Classics can get boring fast after multiple reads. Oh, come on. I want to read it. Let me read it. Please? So we're 60 years old? Um. All right. How about the coffee? the great equalizer. What about orange juice or tea? Ah, <sighs> okay. Um, yeah, let's use an item. Let's use the ID card on the coffee. Well, fine. We'll have to come back to the coffee if we find something to put into it. Uh, plant's in bad shape. It's one of the easier plants to take care of. Eh. They say plants react positively to conversation. Well, that's too bad. No, seriously. Um. If. Okay. Uh, apparently, I'm not going anywhere with that. Oh, okay, so I hit a button that triggers the item menu. Um sheet of paper. Okay. Let's talk to the paper. Wow. That's profound. <laughs> I do agree. I'd much rather keep it there. But I'm going to keep prodding anyway. Well, fine. Be that way. For my unpublished novel. A blank book. I just talked to paper. Blank paper. Ah, a pen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, there's the headphones. Let's look at them. Aren't they special? The ultimate in budget audio. Better try them out so I can start crafting my review. I don't think so. Let's check this out. Ooh. 
Oh, that reminds me of like something out of Ghostbusters. Let's use the ID card. Oh, come on. I was going to show whatever it is in the sink the importance of knowing your identity. Um... Did it just try to talk back? Wait, is that thing going to kill me if I keep talking to it? Apparently not. Can I prod it? Oh. That's like if we're not cleaning the sink. Spoiled milk. Alright. Let's talk to the fridge. You remind the fridge it needs to pick up some more milk when you go out. Wow. I forgot, we're in 2064, of course it would do that. Um, um, <laughs> cold conversation with the fridge. Alright. Yeah, let's take it. Why not? Wait, can I take the mustard? No, it's adhered to the fridge door. Okay, well, you know what would go great with some coffee? Let's uh, add some milk. Spoiled milk and stale old coffee. Wait. Um, oh, okay. Apparently you're not allowed to mix the two. Take a sip of the old stale coffee. Huh. I have some more. Oh, okay, fine. Let's look at the bed. How come I haven't made my bed? Eh, I don't know. Oh, you sure I need to submit the article? Let's talk to the bed. Oh, fine, fine, fine. Is there anything else I can... Yeah, there's this poster. My friend Hayden gave me the poster. Group is old. YM. It's like YMCA, but not the entire... Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what that stands for. Let's touch the poster. It's a load-bearing poster. Um, okay, so my entire apartment could go crumbling down if I touch that. Alright, let's talk to the headphones. Oh, nice. Let's keep talking. They're not smart enough to say anything back, it seems. Well, okay, fine. <sighs> fine. If the game insists, I will wear the headphones. Um. Oh, I could use them with some things in my apartment. Uh, open inventory. Play music. Nice. Uh, which theme do we want? This one? Play music. RAD. Small plastic ID card with my name, picture, and stats. Alright. Um, can I use um, my headphones with the book? Oh, nice. Yeah, when's that technology going to exist, by the way? Um, let's use our headphones on the paper. Wait, can the headphones only read... Yeah, let's try them on this. Uh, 
That's a pretty special technology, isn't it? YMO. I'm sure that means something to someone. Right away. What, what if I just want to slack off and save writing for another day? Uh, who needs a roof? Let's check out the door. Can we use the headphones on the door? Oh, sounds secure. <laughs> hey, you're getting paid to write this review. No one expects you to be this morally grounded. Well, okay, fine. I suppose I don't need to test the headphones with every single... Hang on. Let's use the headphones on the fridge. Mmm, making ramen. That's pleasant. Um, unfortunately, you learn that mustard and spoiled milk aren't quite good enough to make good ramen. Oh. Calm down. You're not going to get audited on your Times headphones used quota. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to keep trying to use the damn headphones. They sync automatically. Just try to watch a live concert from Oakland. Oh, that's it? Um... Wait. Is there anything more to do here? Um... I mean, there's a stack of paper. Back. Back, back, back. Uh, stack of paper. Use the headphones. All blank. Nothing to read or hear. Alright, so I suppose it's probably appropriate for me to actually write the article. Uh, so yeah, let's get a writing. Alright, time to get work out of the way. Let's do this. Yeah. I'd like to think that writing articles isn't so much selling your soul as about being expressive. Um, also, do I keep, get to keep these budget headphones? Um, time for bed. What? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's watch a video. Let's watch a video. sync up the headphones and watch a live stream of a weather report by a news rom. Can we watch another video? A celebrity gossip show? Um, bus drivers, a reality show? That reminds me of the Mythbusters um, a show involving a car and escaping from a frozen lake that's caving in. Um, get a live stream of Celebrity Gossip Show. It looks like we've explored that to the maximum extent that can be explored. Let's talk to the bed one more time. Oh, if it had a portrait on the sheets or on the pillow, then we could actually, like, listen to it. Oh, spiffy. That is nice. All right, day one complete. Oh, well, that's unexpected. All right. Ah, good. You're finally awake. Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. Also, where did my coffee go? I can't be awake without my coffee. Um, yes. Only for myself, though. Um. Huh? What? Oh, I hope you don't mind. Yeah, what you doing here? You were asleep. I had some spare time on my hands, so I reorganized your records and entertainment media using Bisac. 
Okay, that's great and all, but where's my coffee? Oh, my coffee's on the sink. That's a really nice touch. Once that was done, I found the cleanliness of your living and workspace to be suboptimal conditions for the long-term performance of my microactuators. So I took the liberty of cleaning the place up a bit. I mean, it wasn't that bad. As you awoke, I was attempting to interface and make performance adjustments to your personal computer, but I've uh, run into a bit of a snag. Oh? Um, what would that be, sir? Oh. Um. Yeah, also, like, my computer's a POS. Tell me what you're doing here. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to engage you in any sort of subterfuge, but I tend to ramble on a bit when I'm nervous. Okay. Can you answer the damn question? I have all the necessary protocols, but I've never actually spoken to another person besides Hayden until now. You're stalling, buddy. Oh. Wait. Yeah, you know Hayden? Well, saying I know Hayden is putting it simply, but yes. Yeah, what's... where is he? I don't really know. That's why I'm here. Oh. Oh. Help me. You aren't quite my only hope, but you're certainly the most statistically supported. Oh, well, okay, that's refreshing. From a robot who, like, breaks into my apartment, cleans it up, and doesn't even tidy the bed. Like, I know I was asleep there, but my sheets still aren't folded up. And there's still that thing in the sink. I mean, what kind of assistant are you? Um... Okay. Um, yeah, I know you're just a robot, dude. What makes you believe that I'm your hope? I algorithm against every contact in Hayden's address book. Based on the combined deductions of personal profile, directness of connection to Hayden, occupational skill, and probable motive, you are the candidate most likely to both be able and willing to help me. Uh, I haven't seen Hayden in over a year. What do you mean, directness of connection? Oh, well, I guess you're considering these other factors, too. Oh, you're in a tight spot. least likely to be suspected of doing so. Hmm, fair point. I haven't seen him forever. Um, yeah. Like, how is this going to work out? I that you might not want to help me out of the goodness of your heart, as they say. Dude, just because you're, I mean, you're a robot, right? Um, just because you're a robot doesn't mean you could go sassing me about being a human. But considering your recent slump in published articles and the lack of liquid assets in your bank accounts. Uh, hey, I've got more than one bank account? Sweet. I figured you would jump at the chance to be first on the scene of the violent disappearance of a prominent parallax researcher right in the heart of Neo-SF. Uh, okay, point taken. Fine. I mean, writing isn't the most exciting thing to be doing in Neo-SF anyway, so... Am I wrong? No. You mean you mm -hmm. store your cash under that ratty mattress in the corner? Dude, you didn't even clean up my mattress and now you're mocking it. Uh, but fine. Earlier tonight, Hayden's apartment was assaulted by some persons unknown to me. Wait, his apartment was assaulted? Like, somebody got outside of the door, or outside the building, and started, like, ramming into the building? Um. He seemed frightened, okay. terrified even, and instructed me to escape. Uh, I'm thinking that, like, Hayden's playing somewhat of a joke by making this robot who pretends to be human. Just saying. I crawled out of a window and after some deliberation hurried here. I heard them breaking down the door as I left. Dude, what's your clock speed anyhow? What do you mean after some deliberation? Are you just trying to make me feel comfortable? All right. Um Hmm. Yeah. I mean, obviously somebody was out to do something. Um, let's, yeah. He is one of the top researchers at Parallax, but there's no way that alone would be enough to get him kidnapped. 
so he's one of the top researchers. He blows me off for like a year. And I don't know. It just seems I like... I it has to do with me. Yeah. Uh, I think Hayden's playing games with me. Yeah, who are you? Ah, excuse me. I forgot to introduce myself. I've never had the pleasure of doing so before. Okay. You're still stalling, buddy. I am Turing. Oh. Turing. I know this must sound quite unflattering, but I suppose you could describe me as one of Hayden's experiments. Uh, does that mean you're actually a robot, not like a person in a robot suit? He's currently researching advanced machine intelligence at Parallax. Or maybe some I kind of hybrid. Alright. So, I mean, are you like a robot or some kind of hybrid or what? Advanced machine intelligence. Exploring true artificial sapience. Whatever that is. It's possible that the idea of a sapient machine could scare or tempt an organization into kidnapping him. Um, I mean, considering the other stuff that's going down and the fact that we're in California, sure, maybe. Either to stop his research or to take it and use it for themselves. Hmm. So. Yeah, what makes you special? A regular ROM has virtual intelligence. Okay. They can appear rather smart, even human seeming when you talk to them. Yeah, I don't believe that. But they're just cleverly programmed to respond to a variety of situations in an organic manner. Okay. Point taken. They aren't in any way self-deterministic. Um, arguably, artificial intelligence, period, isn't self-deterministic, because if you're considering that it's artificial, it's, uh, I mean, this is the whole Chinese room experiment. Put somebody or some robot in a room, pass messages back and forth underneath the door, and if you're determining that you're having an interesting conversation then um, then you can consider the being in that room intelligent. Or can you? That's the Chinese room experiment, if I understand it properly. And I'm saying that, you know, a machine, you can claim self-determinism, but you're just following what the code tells you to do, buddy. As for myself, much of my code wasn't actually written by Hayden, but rather during my infancy as I learned to interact with the world around me. Yeah, whatever. I mean, you can compile whatever you want to compile, but you're still following instructions. But despite my ability to self-modify my code... Yeah, I mean, that's been around since, like, to the 1900s with von Neumann machines. But okay. I am free to adapt or develop any further without Hayden's guidance. Hey, what do you mean afraid? Tell me more about the sphere. With the illusion of free will? <sighs> yeah, seriously, how are you gonna know? How would you? Hayden once told me that his desire to create artificial life stemmed from his need to find out. But I can't say I have any new insight into the question. Wait, so are you posing to me the question of how would I know if I'm intelligent? And if I have free will? I know that because I'm human. <laughs> it's an argument from pride. Do you have no pride, robot? I mean, Turing. I mean, it's a lot harder to prove for a human than for a robot. Yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah, I get that Hayden, um, was assaulted and apparently kidnapped, or so you're telling me. He could still be leading me on a ruse, 
Still, you haven't told me anything about this fear. Um, I don't know. You're not really explaining yourself very well here, buddy. Uh, yeah. Is anyone out for Hayden? I'm not certain who would benefit the most from taking Hayden prisoner. Um, probably me, actually. You know, if I could take him prisoner, and he's some, like, hotshot scientist, even if he's my friend. Um, that would actually pay the bills and allow me to eat something other than mustard. So, like, I would benefit the most from taking him, in theory. Not that I would do that, but I would be the one who would benefit the most. Oh, your dog's code was compiled as he learned. That doesn't make him sentient and self-aware. <laughs> I think he's self-aware, but you don't know. Yeah. Ah. Oh. The robot killed his human designer. So he's sentient. Uh, there we go. Yeah, if we assume that anybody who's capable of killing um, is sentient, then sure. Yeah. There's an argument that's compelling. Maybe logically flawed, but whatever. Admittedly, Hayden has become increasingly paranoid as of late and has warned me to stay alert. But he would never specify anyone I should fear when I ask. Um... It still hasn't occurred to you that, like, I'd be the one who'd benefit most from kidnapping Hayden so I could get my bills paid and... Uh. It's not as though he has any obvious enemies. <sighs> well, like you said, um, you considered all those factors, and one of them was closeness to Hayden. Um, in terms of finding somebody willing to help or able to help. There are several multinational corporations that could make use of his engineering skills. But I can't imagine any of them would go as far as snatching him. Just several? I mean, you said Hayden was brilliant, but if there are only a few in the whole world who could benefit from him, surely he's quite good at what he does. Uh, ah, you still think the robot killed him? Uh, it could happen. Could be. But if the robot killed him, like, what the heck is the robot doing here? Is he just trying to trace me, so... Charging the auto cab fare from here to Hayden's apartment to your personal finance account. Oh. The car has just arrived. Perfect. I mean, hey! Okay. Um... <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, let's do this, buddy. Oh, right. Yeah, it's the 21st. Hmm, that's strange. Oh, is it? Well, the door for our home seems to have already been repaired. Oh, okay. I'm cool. I'm certain my audio sensors picked up the sounds of his assailants breaking the lock. Sure. Yeah, I'm just going to doubt everything you say until you give me reason to believe otherwise. Dude, just like, I don't know, we'll say a half hour ago, in the time it took to get from my apartment to here, you were so afraid of everything, and now you're so proud of who you are, and yet you still um, struggle with the doubt of whether you have free will or not. You ran away? Aren't robots supposed to protect humans? At best, it means someone is aware there's a situation here. How did... Proceed carefully. How the heck, if you're supposed to protect a human... Before we go any further, I feel I need to clear the air between us. Oh, yeah, I think so. Humans have been proceeding faster than I am capable of processing them, and I may have been overly critical of you in our previous conversations. I mean, you're challenging me to explain to you that you have free will, and now you're giving me all this kind of stuff. Can't we just deal with one subject at a time? I have put you in an unexpected situation, and it was tactless of me to question your motivations. Yeah? Let's strive to have a more harmonious relationship. 
relationship from now on. Okay, but, you know, if that's going to happen, buddy, you're going to have to wisen up a little bit and not be so much of whatever. Um, I mean, I'm not going to attribute this kind of human motivation to you. You dragged me all the way out here. You charged my account. You cleaned my apartment, but you didn't even clean up the mattress. And then you called my mattress ratty. And... Whatever. Oh, a lucky break! A lucky break? It seems my access codes still work. Oh, well that works. Hayden's door has far better security than yours does. Oh, well if you say so. Yeah, you made your point. Let's go. Um... Yeah. I do not make a habit of entering people's homes in the middle of the night without permission for no reason. You sure? I mean, you were talking about, do I have free will? And I'm asking you, like, you sure there was actually kidnapping here? And you're pers- <sighs> I mean, do you have to take it personally every time I ask you a question like this, buddy? Do you... I mean, I know I intended that as a personal question. Like, are you sure? Because I'm looking for some kind of affirmation that something actually went wrong. And all you're giving me is all this sass about, oh yeah, no, I'm such a good robot. Is that all you're ever going to be able to fall back to? You dragged me all the way out here and charged my card. I guess. Breaking and entering is just not a sustainable hobby. Um. Okay, well, good to know that you've seriously considered the possibility of taking up a living, breaking and entering, and now you're telling me that it's not sustainable. Although, like, surely some people actually do sustain a living doing it. So, maybe for you it's not sustainable, but... What kind of logical argument is that? I saw it happen myself. Wait. So you said you thought you heard them breaking in. You thought you heard them opening the lock. And now it's... Oh, wait. No, I saw it. Which is it, Hayden? Or Turing? Tried to protect him. Yeah. Yeah, you should have. I doubt he could have fought off a serious assault. Besides, you still haven't explained to me the answer to my question. It's like, why did you run away? Hayden is the most physically intimidating of individuals. Yeah. <laughs> of course not. How silly. Oh. Of course not. How silly it would be for Hayden to make a robot that would actually protect people. To make a machine intelligence truly self-deterministic, it must be able to self-modify. Um... Yeah, no, I think you're missing the point here. Any sapient worth their silicon would be able to code around such an inhibitor eventually. Okay, that's a reasonable point. So for once, in this last half hour, you finally I made a point I agree with. Right uh-huh. It would be fun to see you try. I won't for the same reason you don't go around randomly killing people. How do you know what I do? The social contract, as a useful construct, is just as apparent to me as it is to you. It simply isn't acceptable to go on a murderous rampage. Maybe to you it's not. Well, okay, fine. Self-defense and defense of one's home and family is typically allowed, though. Um, sure. I could have and may even have been obligated to come to Hayden's defense. You're not making any sense here. Like, just after you got me to agree with you, um, that, like, uh, whatever point it was that you made a minute ago, 
about how you have to be able to self-modify, otherwise a person would eventually figure out how to work around the lack of self-modification. That's the theme that's actually featured in a different game about robots. One that I have streamed before and will stream again at some point. Um, but, yeah. You got me to agree with you there. And now you're not making sense again. Saying that you might have been obligated to come to his defense. What do you mean by that? Might. Um, yeah, I'm not going to give you any reassurance. Excellent point. Yeah, we have to just focus on what's ahead. Alright. Can I... Yeah. We've got some photos here. Can we... Oh, I can't listen to the photos? Comparing an ID picture to a nice photograph? Not so good for your self-esteem. Let's use our ID on the plant. Oh, plants need water, not milk. Alright. Wait. Um, oh, yeah, let's see. Let's use the headphones on the plant. It's bad manners to listen on other people's plants. Huh, you don't say. Um, yeah, I guess it is impressive that he's decided in one day about free will. I guess that's okay. Still, how fast of a robot is he? A ROM only needs a few parts to get a voice. Maybe this one's better as it is, after all. Oh. So that's a ROM that doesn't have a voice. It's just a whole bunch of parts. Let's... Wait, can I not use... Why can't I use the headphones on the stack of books? Oh, I think I see something under those reference books. I wanted to listen to the books. Well, I hope that... Okay. Um... Fine. Let's use the uh, tablet. That device. I find it rather annoying that he prefers to go basic rather than entrust me with his schedule. Oh. <sighs> Gosh. You're just an emotional nutcase, aren't you? It is well within my skill set. But he claims he does not want me to begin to feel subservient to him. Uh-huh. It looks like there's a place here for a physical memory card. Okay. Let's use the milk on the tech to fix it. Although the milk surely has a magical energy within it, it's unlikely that it would charge the battery. Oh yeah. Let's use the milk on the console. That would be one funky controller. You sync to the TV and listen to boring news in high def. Okay, that was exciting. You mean I can't play games yet? How about now? <laughs> You'll probably become a rad video game wizard for having declined to play the games. All right, can I interact with the computer? Oh no. Well, can I log in and then interact with it? Uh huh. Do you not know his password or cannot get us into it? Most people just use a hand screen or goggles in conjunction with their ROM, but desktop rigs like this are still more suitable to the intensive programming tasks Aiden needs to perform. Uh. uh uh, okay, I guess that makes some sense, but how is it that we made it to the year 2064 and we still don't have voice activated intensive programming tasks? Like, it seems like that would be one of the first things that would get automated, not one of the last. Goodness. I mean, I know we're in California, but we can't be that screwed. Uh, whatever. Let's get in. Unfortunately, no, I don't. You don't know. And before you ask, I don't think I would be able to break past its security in any reasonable length of time. <sighs> well, okay, so he's a top-of-the-line researcher. He's 
probably using a pretty well secured computer from who knows where. Otherwise, I would give you so much flack for that. <laughs> yeah, that would be too easy. <sighs> I'm sorry to disappoint you. No, you're not. If you'd like to try your hand at digital breaking and entering, be my guest. Okay. I actually have a bit less free processing power than a regular ROM, despite my powerful CPU. Dude, you're so smug, and then at the same time so insecure. Much of those extra clock cycles are used to maintain my complex personality algorithms. Good for you. Hayden's computer has enough spare processing power to run counter-intrusion software, if I attempt to slice in. Sure. Frankly, even if I did have the power capability, I haven't found hacking to be one of my talents. Oh. So you have talents other than having a personality. What talents do you have? Um... Yeah, tell us about your talent. The whole reason humans have always been better at breaking into systems than the systems are at keeping them out is because humans have intuition. <sighs> Let me process this. The whole reason humans have been better at breaking into systems when systems are keeping them out, it's because humans have intuition. None of that makes any sense at any level. If you consider things in anything other than a very abstract sense. So I guess I do have to say, only in abstract does that sentence make any bit of sense. While computers can only think in straight lines, Humans can think sideways and upside down. Um. Um. Turing, I know you've got a personality. I know you're even trying to act polite and trying to be helpful. But my god, are you stupid. <laughs> I lack that ability. Oh. Well, maybe you really are stupid. Maybe I should feel bad for you. Well, I wouldn't say that, but as silly as it sounds, I just don't think I'm very good with computers. Okay. Are you good at anything? I to have some skill with painting, though. Dude, show me your paintings. Hayden I don't believe you. Some of my pieces, but I'm not sure he has a firm enough grasp of early 20th century abstract expressionism to give me an objective opinion. Dude, I want to see your paintings now. Pictures or GTFO. <sighs> That's true. Machines are best at reproduction. Still life, impressionism, photorealism. Mental shortcuts help. Yeah. Well, mental shortcuts are really just another term for parallel processing. Um, but I find it or, more challenging and satisfying to paint what I feel. Or part of that's also just recall. But yeah, between parallel processing and recall, there's plenty of opportunity for remembering how to address the situation or how... Um, doing lateral thoughts um, to solve something in a creative manner. But really, that's just memory recall and parallel processing. Um, yeah. But Turing here might be just really seriously retarded. Um, he finds it more challenging and satisfying to paint what he feels. Oh. Well, apparently he's got feelings now. No, I don't want to get back to searching. I want to see the paintings. I want proof. I want to know what I'm dealing with. I want to see that Without he's got... Card, this is useless. I want to see that he's not lying to me. That he's not luring me into something. Uh, so what else is there? Yeah, I'm going to try to break in. Dude, I push a button. Oh, there's not even a keyboard. Uh, I use a milk on the computer. 
Oh, come on. Cost more credits than I make in six months. Okay, can I sell it and, you know, like pay for um, my rent? Uh, it looks like scanning my ID card didn't do anything. Uh, oh, look at the window. Hayden likes the natural light that this apartment affords. I can't blame him for that. This window here is where I escaped from. Um, that point in order, point of order, that window's closed. It is a considerable distance to the ground below. Dude. I mean, if you're any good at physics, you can calculate just how much harm would occur to a robot for that kind of fall. Um, yeah, how'd you get down? I took the fire escape. Oh, you jokester. Let's use the milk on the window. <laughs> oh no. Milk is stuck to the inside of my pocket. That's too bad. Better be careful out on the balcony. Oh, come on. Don't leave fingerprints. So what else is there in this abode? Rom parts, a plant, some photos, a window, game consoles, a TV, broken tech, a memory card. It looks like an old high-density memory card. Something in this room might be able to read it. You don't say. Hayden's not the type to leave something like this just lying on the floor. Okay, so I guess I'll pick up the memory card. And I guess, in the interest of time, let's read the memory card. Um... Hayden must have removed the memory card in order to prevent his assailants from easily tracing his connections. Um, we're talking about a laptop that was hidden under a stack of books and a memory card that was like, uh, whatever. If only he had kept his information stored with me, he would not have had to resort to such rude measures. You do realize that there's so many more places you could have hidden that memory card to make it a lot harder for his assailants to find. Say, like, wedged below the game console cabinet thing and the wall. That'd be a lot harder to find there. Um, Tablet's calendar said he was supposed to meet with someone named Tomcat. Not really. You don't know who Tomcat is. Great, of course you don't. Yeah, of course, you just know nothing. It says here they were going to meet at a club called Stardust, located in the Castro District. Okay. I'll mark it on your city map. Uh, are you going to charge... Well, I guess you are going to charge my account again to help us get we there. head over there and ask around about this Tomcat character. Perhaps they can shine some light on why Hayden was snatched. Yeah, we'll see. So, first of all, you... Barge into my apartment, leave me out here, and then tell me that there was an assault, and start planting all these clues everywhere. Um, oh, excuse me. I still haven't set up a user account for you in my system. Oh, of course you haven't. That would be too useful. We shouldn't put that off any longer. If you say so. Once finished, I will have an assortment of new ways to assist you. Oh. To reroute any call or message that you receive while we're out and about. Okay. I just need to ask you a few questions. This is an exciting thing, I promise. So wait. You broke into my lappy. You hacked into my apartment. You know a lot of information about me, and you still need to set up an account. Um, yeah. Okay, if you say so. Hey, uh, 
Han Waffle 36. I That's quite a name. I've spent a few quadrillion clock cycles to bypass that part of my operating system. But that seems less efficient than just running the setup program. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. If we've got like a 2.4 megahertz processor, that's like 2.4, let's see. What's our orders of magnitude? Kilohertz, megahertz, gigahertz, and then whatever beyond giga. If by the year 2064, a few quadrillion clock cycles is something too expensive to work around. Um, yeah, then you're running some pretty old hardware there, buddy. So, so fine. Here we go. Here we go. Not gonna argue Welcome with. To the first time user setup for your new relationship and organizational manager running the latest build of Parallax's live intelligence processing system. Oh, that's what LIPS is for. Live intelligence processing system. I'll need to ask you a few questions, and then you can get right to managing your life with your new ROM. Dude. Turing's my ROM now. Dibs. If you have any questions, feel free to consult our online FAQ and setup guide, or contact our support department directly. Well spoken, Cormac. Well said. <laughs> if you got any questions, feel free to consult the... Wait. An online FAQ? How am I going to get online? Um... First, could you tell me your preferred name? For use in account creation, Ooh. online communication, oh my. and ah, I should have had this prepared. <laughs> Thank you. I have input your name as Cut the Crap Turing. We need to go. Awesome. Cool. Oh, come on. All right, so... Oh, I can do ten letters. Fine. We'll do... Um, something I've used elsewhere. There we go. Sure. I could change Turing's colors. Spiffy. Next, could you tell me which pronouns I should use for you in referential and conversational speech? Huh. More options. Custom pronouns, guys. Custom pronouns. Please enter your pronouns. All right. Uh, let's see. Subject pronoun. Um, let's see. He, she, they, etc. Wait. Why would? What's the purpose of? using he, she, or they if I'm the protagonist. I can't think of a single case where you would need the subject pronoun referring to me. Um, hmm. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, this really caught me off guard. I didn't think I'd be able to provide an, a subject pronoun. Um, uh, fine. Uh, this is for other characters. Yeah, but if I am in the presence of this robot, it should not have any need to refer to me in the third person. I don't know. It? You want to go with it? Uh, I don't know. I want something more impressive. How about bro? There we go. Bro. Um, done. Pronoun. <laughs> uh, him, her, them. Uh, how about dude? Um, no, that doesn't quite fit, though. How about bro? We got bro, guys. Done. 
Uh, possessive determiner. Um, I don't have a possessive qualifier, like a apostrophe. Um, let's see. I could go with dude here. Um, uh, I'm just trying to think of something more funny than his or, or their. Um, uh, bro. We're just going to do bro all over the place and confuse the crud out of everybody. Possessive pronoun. Bro. Yeah. Should it be is or are? How about B? I want B. Um. Now yeah, we're going to go with is. Here's how your pronouns look in action. Okay. Todowski went to the park. I went with bro. Bro bot bro Hassi. At least I think Hassi was bro. Bro is a good friend. How about that? Anybody object? Anybody got better suggestions? I still think that um, B would be more entertaining than is. Uh, yeah, no, I get that. I get that I'm making a big deal out of nothing. Um, I still think in that second sentence, it'd be better for the subject pronoun to be dude. Um, Does that look right? Nah, let's try changing it. Uh, something's wrong. Which pronoun would you like? Subject pronoun. We're gonna change this to dude. All right, dude. Here's how your pronouns look in action. I went with bro, dude, bro, bro, dude, bot, bro, Hassie. At least I think the Hassie was bro. Wait. Oh, that third one is a possessive thing. Dude, be a good friend. Um. I still want to come up with a better pronoun. Um, Does that look right? Yeah, I need to differentiate. We need a possessive determiner. Uh, his. Um, so, how do I say... How do I do a possessive determiner? Um, mammal? Mm, okay, yeah, mammal's definitely a thing. Um, now, this is critical, guys. We have to get this right. Um, uh, I still want to come up with a, I don't know, something hilarious here. Um, let's see, I was thinking like, XKCD says pseudo make me a sandwich. Uh, I just put a random word in here. It could be funny, but it has to be a funny word. Um, you got brew, bro, dude, um, um, Actually, yeah, I could, um, I could give him a New York accent. Yeah, actually, let's give him a Southern accent. Y'alls. Y'alls. There we go. Went to the park. I went with bro. Dude brought you brought y'all's Hassie. At least I think Hassie was bro. Dude, be a good friend. Does that look right? Um. Yeah. Let's. Which 
pronoun. Let's change the fourth one. Possessive pronoun. Uh, we can't use bro here, too. Um... Possessive. I would say, like, uses. Oh, we can do this. Nice. There we go. Here's how your pronouns look in action. Went to the park. I went with bro. Do bro y'all is hassy. At least I think the hassy was uses. Dude, be a good friend. Yeah, I still want is to be B. If I could change that, that would be totally cool. I went with bro. Um Dude brought y'all's Hassie. At least I thought Hassie was uses. Um, now, I just have to make sure I understand the grammar. Because I've seriously confused myself. So, possessive determiner, possessive pronoun would be his. Yeah, his is cool. Um... At least I think the assy was uses. Um, now, I'm conv confused. Uh, what the, what's the third one? Possessive determiner. His. His, her, their. As opposed to his, her, or theirs. Okay. Yeah, I still need something better than y'all's. I'll probably have to go with dudes. Um, just in the interest of being totally gender neutral. Here's how your pronoun. Um. So, I went with him, he brought his Hassie, at least I thought the Hassie was his, um, he's a good friend. Yeah, it's probably good enough. I still want to do better, but, um, hmm. Use this is probably going to confuse me too much. Like yeah, I want to change uses to y'alls. More options. Delete. There we go. Here's how you're I went with bro. Do brought dudes assy. At least I thought the Hassie was y'all's. Dude, be a good friend. Does that look right? Yeah, good enough. Thank you. I have input your pronouns. As dude, bro, dudes, y'alls. Finally, could you tell me your preferred diet for use in restaurant recommendations? Um. Huh. What are all my options here? Kosher, gluten free, vegan. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Diet set as goddammit touring. Are you sure? Yeah. Thank you for confirming. <laughs> Perfect. I have obtained your physical location from GPS and will load local data into my memory as it becomes available. Well, good to know. Although it's probably already loaded. You can your submitted profile information for accuracy or restart setup to enter it again. Are you kidding after... Well, oh, okay, fine. Your name, your pronouns... Yeah, right? eh, sure. Um... Yeah, sure, why not? Thank you. See, that was relatively painless. 
You should now also be able to access the local map of Neo SF. Huh. The meeting with Tomcat isn't until later this evening. Perhaps we should head back to your apartment for now. I'm not sure that anybody could survive Neo SF without alcohol. That's the problem. Um. All right, let's go. I'm sure, we can find some common ground while getting to know one another better. Dude, you've been avoiding all my questions. It will be an efficient use of our time together. Fine. Thank you for escorting me here. Um. Yeah, I guess I'm the escort. Let's head back to your home. Let's not. It's still a bright, beautiful day out there. This game does not autosave, so be sure to save frequently. Well, it's not my problem, but okay, fine. Yeah, you could simulate alcohol, sure. Chapter One. I was gonna say we're still on the twenty-first. The day counter. Oh, is that the thing in the sink, or is that the plant? Have you been overwatering it? Uh, no. <laughs> Don't plants need water? It's actually a succulent, and since I'm assuming you keep this window open all the time. It should get more than enough water just from the occasional rain blowing in. Oh. Okay. Speaking of the rain, your decorative plant may be doing poorly, but the mildew in your drywall is flourishing. Oh, excellent. Um. Okay. Still, I'll keep an eye on it. If you say so. Dude, really? Why did we go back here? Why don't we just go directly from Hayden's place to Stardust? I mean, we just got here. I haven't even had a chance to eat my mustard out of the fridge yet. Fine, we'll save. Save, save, save. Save game as I don't know one. It's a dramatic, dramatic name for a save. Oh yeah, chapter one. Let's save. Yeah, save that as one. Okay. Let's go back. Continue. Let's explore. Let's talk to the plant. Is any plant state to have a discussion? Oh, yeah. It's not very. Um, I don't know. The plant doesn't want to talk. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, let me try giving the plant some nutrients. Um. I don't know. I think the plant could take it. <laughs> don't listen. That's not a good vibe. See, you give me flack for listening to other people's plants and for listening to my own plants. Okay, fine. Let's power on the thing. Oh, Turing, did you have to break it? Turing, you ruined my my beautiful internets. On the bright side, your face's reflection on the screen resembles a human. Your jade plant is still in pretty poor shape. How thoughtful of them. The Crassula Obata, also known as the Jade Plant, Money Tree, Lucky Tree, or Friendship Tree, huh. is an excellent and easy to care for house plant. I wouldn't actually mind seeing him speak 
even if the chat, or I'm sorry, even if the text there scrolls really quickly because I double tap the button, I don't mind seeing the animation of him speaking. It's just I prefer not to see the letters scroll one at a time. Um, you have to, uh, you actually have to ask Turing about the plant if you want the ability to keep it alive. Beautiful bonsai are suitable for beginners and have some cultural significance both in the Far East and America as a token for good financial luck. Oh, great! Likely an urban legend, but still a nice gift. If you say so. Okay, so what should you do? I'd like your authorization to have a few tools shipped here. If I replant it into a more suitable pot with sandier soil, it should be thriving again soon. Okay, sure, why not? You just have to remember to water it less frequently. Considering the state of your apartment, I'd have figured you'd neglect it rather than drown it. Uh. Ironic, since it would be doing better if you had. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. Whatever. Excellent. The supply should be here soon. I ordered from a place close by to keep the shipping costs down. Oh, uh, one of When I was doing the research on how to best take care of the Crestula ovata, I stumbled upon the persistent belief that talking to plants improves their health. You did that on purpose, Turing. Belief? Really? Shaky, so it could all be ranked superstition. You got mildew? I have in fact already taken the liberty of sending a request to his office. Oh, cool. And considering the broken window, broken sink, and the lingering sense of disrepair, I am not confident he has a history of following through. <laughs> Dude. Um, broken window, broken sink, and lingering sense of disrepair, that's all me. That's like, that's my jive, that's my vibe, that's how I live my apartment. Why you gotta be so down in my style of life? All right, so. I would suggest confronting him in person, but I have run a mesh search, and the man is a convicted felon for assault and battery with a deadly weapon. Wait, that's my landlord, really? Perhaps we should bring some sort of a bride? Uh... I will continue to formulate a stratagem. One stratagem would be find a different place to live. Um, yeah. Be sure to help passive-aggressive young. <laughs> flourishing in no time. If left in direct sunlight, the leaves gain a pretty red tinge to their edges, and it should start flowering in the autumn. In the autumn? Which, considering that we're in December, the autumn would be like ten months away. It'll really pull the whole room together. Cool. You know, once we get the sink fixed. Um, no, that's all you, buddy. You're the one fixing the sink. I'll have this. It'll really pull. The um, you know. do we have anything else to discuss? Apparently not. Can I listen to Turing? If you examine those headphones on the items menu of your Lips Type M mobile device, you will be able to play any kind of music you like. Alright, let's listen to the paper. The headphones seem confused. Okay, if you say so. Dude, I want my coffee. Cats on coffee mugs? Nonsense. Heh. <laughs> uh, headphones are too smart to even attempt listening to gross coffee. Maybe nice coffee. Just die already, plant. I, I, I think it just shriveled a little. Sweet. This action will have consequences. Probably. Oh, great. Good to know that my actions actually have consequences. Why do you even still keep it? Dude, why are you questioning my motives? 
You're just a robot. Oh yeah! Well, it's the one character in the game I get to be vicious to. Dude, what's wrong with you, Turing? You know, I just developed a theory that, um, Turing... Yeah, Turing is just crazy. Turing's bipolar. Turing is so bipolar. Uh, yeah. Well, that's why you have to push him. Um, let's listen to the door. This door is poor. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, look! The bed is made! Um... Somebody made the bed. No way. Yeah. I'm not sleepy right now, but I haven't had my coffee. Of course I'm sleepy. Well, fine. <laughs> uh, okay. Can I not examine the drawers? Apparently not. Is there anything in the fridge? Putting anything inside immediately halves its shelf life. Okay, well, I guess we'll have to progress. Ready to head out? Nope. Ready to head out? Okay, sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. Or do you just have gross coffee? So we got home, we've got Stardust Club, and that's it. Well, this looks like the place. Assuming the flashing neon signs are telling the truth. Um, you know, if this weren't the place, wouldn't they be like sued for defamation or something? Um, so, oh, right. Yeah, I think it's all a dude's coffee. From the sounds of the music, things are already underway at Stardust, even so early. Hopefully we can find Tomcat inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, can I, like... Dude, if I want all the free money, I just want to jump out in front of a car and pick up all that insurance money. But, okay. Um, 2062... ZIS CR4 Coupe. Um, great. Expensive car. Can we put the milk on the car? <laughs> yeah, I expected as much. The car is so ready for the milk. It knows. Let's try to use our ID to... Oh. Okay, let's try stealing somebody's ID. I can't push the car. Okay, let's listen to the car. Okay, the latest ZIS coupe starts playing. Um, if Wizaki Pete can't save you credits on your next ride, you'll get a free ticket. Oh, oh, that can be fun. I want a free ticket to the game. Bouncer, would you care for some milk? <laughs> Um, are you sure you don't want some milk? Alright, looks good to me. Oh. Uh, okay. It's open. Sign's on 24-7. Then why have an open sign? Bacteria live in the base. They take in oxygen and release CO2 while keeping the soil rich by breaking down decaying material shed by the plant. Well, that's pretty cool. Uh, if you watch closely, you can see the condensation roll off the top and back down to the soil. Either the plant doesn't hear you, or it's choosing to ignore your attempts to talk to it. Let's try this one. In politics, it's a little green. 
Yeah, but... I mean, like, if you're open all the time, why do you have a door? I, I guess that's the more important point. Like, okay, the open sign gathers attention. As do the other two signs that detract people as they're trying to drive by and, like, pay attention to the road. Um, but why have a door if you're open 24-7? Um, unless you're not. Okay, can I... It's not eggnog. Oh, nice. Uh, how about the headphones? Oh, we get holiday jingles? Wait, where's my holiday jams? I want my holiday jams. Alright. Um... Unfortunately, he's not much of a conversationalist. Alright. Wait, can I not look at the other Stardust sign? Yeah. Like the one that just says dust. What if that other sign that says dust is just like an angel dust dealer? Okay, I'm the only person who would think of that. Um, Alright, let's cross this... Actually, this raises the question, how did I manage to show my ID to the bouncer if I'm on this side of the street? Um, oh, yeah, I guess a door could help control climate. Fine. Let's look at the door. Looks packed. Wait, the door looks packed? Oh, those are just silhouettes painted and... Okay, fine. Um... Yeah. Yeah, I feel so welcome. Let's hug the bouncer. He doesn't want a hug. I already saw it. You're good. Are you sure? I don't know, man. You can enter now. Don't make me change my mind. Okay. Uh, I could enter if I could just find the damn entrance. Like I can look at. Oh, open door. Welcome to start. Okay. This is the place. Have you ever been here before? Like, totally. The driving base has some interesting mathematical interactions with the chorus, and the tempo is certainly geared towards exciting the human circulatory system. Let me think about this. Um interesting mathematical interactions with the chorus. I don't know. I'm not sure. It can't be that mathematically interesting. The tempo. Yeah, I guess I could give you that, that the tempo makes some sense. Um, toward exciting the circulatory system. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Anyway, where do you think we should start? Let's um Yeah, let's try the dance floor. Nobody suspects Good that. Idea. Perhaps one of the patrons knows of this tomcat. Also, I want to see if you have any art that you made. Red dancer. Oh yeah. Sweet pair of headphones. Oh yeah, my dollar headphones are so sweet. You want to dance? You know it. Wait, I can't take him up on that? Seriously? Fine. How about some milk? Dude, you want the milk. You know you want it. Um... How's not been treating you, buddy? Everyone's sinking. Sinking like a stone? You wouldn't happen to be Tomcat, would you? Mel. You gotta be confident to talk about your game's music in your game. Um. Hmm. 
Mel. Sup, Mel? You wouldn't happen to be Tomcat, Mel? No, no. Okay. Check the arcade. Oh, fine, if you say so. Alright, let's dance in! Yeah, let's dance in! Yay, it's Left Dancing City over here! Wait. Come on. Have you heard of anyone named Tomcat? Yeah! I think I was dancing with that person a bit ago. No idea where they are now. Try checking the bar? Okay, sure. Having a drink or two or ten is never a bad idea. Are you Tomcat? Um. Alright, uh, let's check out where else we can go here. Well, let's look at the table. I don't have anything good to put on it. Or under it. Oh, fine. A megaphobitor. What? Megaphobitor. Only the most ghost shooting us, soul blasting us fun you'll have this side of the bay. Okay, sure. Scan the ID. Megaphobitor. Oh, all right. Oh yeah, who's the best? Wait, is there any real objective to this game? Biffy. You survived. Yeah, I survived. Those ghosts will think twice before messing with you again. Good thing too. Dude, it's a game. Um <laughs> Fine, if you say so. It's been having problems, you say? Maybe you're just bad at the game. Something doesn't seem right once you get to the boss, you know? Um... Dude, we're gonna beat this game. Man, I gotta do better than this. This is pretty bad. That was pathetic. Dude. It's a game. I'm not a goner. We're gonna beat Megaphobator. Uh, no, we're gonna beat this. Yeah, no. We're gonna beat this using the game controller. Just because we can. Oh, so I, sh I can't feel entirely terrible about that. 
Oh, I ran out of shots. Okay, so maybe I shouldn't feel terrible about this. Maybe it's just not possible on the game controller. did better that time. Uh, yeah, we learned the hard way that we run out of ammo. Uh, yeah, whatever. We're gonna beat this game. Got a high score of 70,600. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Okay, I get the sense that maybe I can't beat that without a mouse. Fine. Yeah, fine. This is the barrier between the arcade and the VIP section. Um, apparently being isolated from the bar, dance floor, and video games makes you important. Fine. So, anything else to explore here? Let's go to the bar. Poster. I can't listen to the poster? <laughs> hey, you never know. Zone 3. Now we're talking. Scrap Brain Proster. New single by Zazen. Starts a... Ooh. Good idea. You did it. Don't listen too long, though. Posters like this charge your pay account if you listen past 30 seconds. Totally not crooked. Let's listen to the chair. Oh wow. So much personality there. Film trailer starts to play, but it's designed more of like a commercial ad. Alright. Um Well I think at this point I either have to take the random shot of whiskey. Use an item. Let's put some milk in there. Ha! Alright. Oh, level three. That could be. That could be. 
Um, dude, have you ever tried listening to a glass of whiskey? They always say is the whiskey talking. Let's touch the bartender. Really? Where's your sense of humor? Gruff man looking man holds down the bar. Um let's use the super spoiled milk no outside drinks, and that just barely counts as one. Ha <laughs> Okay, fine. You look great in this picture. Well what duh. Ha ha ha, just get it. Well that's mean. Morning, friend. What can I do for you? Um Yeah, I want a drink. What are you having? I'll have an orange. Let's see. Giribaldi. Butch flour. Wiener juice. Um, Tokyo tea. That actually sounds good. So many drinks these days. Remind me, what's in there? Drinkionary, the open alcoholopedia says. Melon liqueur with... A mix of vodka, rum, tequila, gin, and triple sec. Does that sound good? Uh, how about no? Like what? Let's see. What's after Tokyo Tea? Um. Drinking game. So many drinks these days. Drinkionary, the open alcoholopedia says. <laughs> it's a surprise. You never know what it'll taste like. Tender's choice. Does that sound good? Oh yeah. Ah, all right, you got it. Coming right up. Drinky game. Now, what is it you need to know? Um. Yeah, we're looking for Hayden. Do you know him? Hayden, scientist guy. Does some kind of computer research. Parallax. Yeah. Pretty sure I know who you're talking about, but I don't think he's around here tonight. Bummer. Our place doesn't really seem like his scene, but I think he comes in to scout young programming talent. Go figure. You think? I can ask around, find out if anyone's seen him. I'll let you know. All right. Oh, <laughs> I should introduce myself. The you... name's Majid. All right. I've been the Sutton bartender Jean. of Stardust for a few years now, but I've owned it a little longer than that. So, what do you want to know? Um, yeah, what did you do before Stardust? Mostly got myself into trouble. When I emigrated from Pakistan, I didn't have a whole lot of employable skills. But I'm real big, which was enough to get hired for some real dirty stuff. Bodyguard work. Oh, cool. Truth be told, I hated the work. I didn't want to be a hired person my whole life. Wait, wait. I wanted something regular, peaceful. Um, perchance, could you be one of the guys who assaulted Hayden? I mean, just saying. A hired fist? Somebody who's big, able to do this sort of bodyguarding kind of work? Knows a lot of information about Hayden? Probably knows Hayden's whereabouts. Probably knows how Hayden lives and who Hayden associates with. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I had enough cash saved up to buy this place, which was a hole at the time. The rest is history. Okay. I'm sure it sounds more exciting than it was. <laughs> I mean, just because you got one song. Also, why'd you emigrate if... I don't know. There's nothing here for you other than this hole in the ground. I don't get it. That's true. And it was true about Stardust. The first six months were great. But after that, the interest dried up and the kids moved on to the next big thing. So, how'd you manage to make do? But, I guess I'm just stubborn and kept throwing good money after bad. Ha! Good for you, buddy. After two years of the remodel, things started to pick back up again. Slowly dug ourselves out of the dead hole. We slowly dug ourselves out. 
We got some regulars around. They started bringing in enough new folks, and it reached critical mass pretty quick. Wait, who's this we? I'm pretty sure Tomcat came in early, but I don't know where they went off to. I'd ask what you were meeting about, but I know they like to keep that kind of stuff quiet. Well, fair enough. Maybe try looking out on the dance floor. They come around here. Tell them you're looking. All right. Sure. Well, it was nice meeting you, but I gotta get back to work. I'll keep an eye out for Tomcat and send them your way if I see them. Well, clearly, you're a very busy fellow with nobody other than me at the counter. Enjoy yourself, and don't be a stranger. All right, can now I reach out and touch Majid? <laughs> Not the worst idea that I've ever had, but it's up there. All right, we'll advance the plot. A woman stands at a drink table, quietly people watching. Her ears are definitely those of someone who has gone undergone gene therapy. She's a hybrid. Um, got a death wish? Yeah, I don't know. Would you care for some milk? Is this supposed to be another cat joke? Ugh. Um, no, I just wanted to know if you wanted some milk. I mean, okay. Um, you've been staring at this question in your homework. Huh. Well, good luck. What? Why should I care about that? Well, I don't know. Yes, can I help you? Are you Tomcat? Huh? Tomcat is... Oh, wait. I get it. You headed right up to the chick with the ears, because of course she'd be the one with the cat name. Well, no. Like, I've literally talked to everybody else in this establishment. And you were the last person I approached, because you're a hybrid, and I don't want to talk... I mean, I didn't think it would be polite for me to... Okay, fine. Unbelievable. Find them yourself, John. Yeah, no, I literally did ask everybody else. Fine. But you didn't think of how that would sound? Um, what's your problem? Look, I'm cruising for cuties right now, and cat jokes are the biggest turnoff. What I makes you think I'm joking? To look for them elsewhere. And one more thing. Don't expect others to be so kind, or even me most times. Okay. You want to talk about the hybrid thing? Cool. No one's trying to hide it, and you won't have an easy time avoiding it at this club. If you say so. But jokes, puns, and worse, assumptions? That will get you blacklisted fast. Um, now I'm pretty sure this club is open. You don't get blacklisted in this club. You don't all have the energy to handhold genotypical people who can't spare 10 seconds to pull out their ROM and look things up. Um. Try to pet me. Your arm is coming off. Oh. You know, fine. We clear? Fine. Sorry, did you say genotypical? Oh. Yeah, as in not a hybrid like me. Now then, I'm not here to educate you, and I do have a life to return to. Such as standing at that table doing nothing? What the hell is your problem? It's just that you get worked up so easily, it's so fun to flesh with you. you. That shit? Join the protest outside Genus. I'm sure those ass butts will love you. Huh. Now get lost. Um. Wanna keep pushing me? You'll regret it fast. I don't know. Do I? You make me have the G throw you out of here. I don't it's know. Locked. I don't know. Are oh. you sure you're a journalist? Oh. Um. Wait. When did I claim to be a journalist in front of? Well, I guess you could look at my files and see that I do writing for a living. But writing versus journalism? 
Like, if I were a journalist, do you think I'd be living in a dump out of an apartment? Um. Yeah. Hi there. Hi. Oh, you were looking for me. Oh, you don't say. Are you Tomcat? Yours truly, though. Sweet. Although, while I, I like the attention, it'd be just grand if you didn't holler for me so loud. <laughs> you don't say. I do my share of flirting with both sides of the law. Wouldn't want little old me to get in trouble, huh? Um. Ha. <laughs> You don't say. She'd probably give hell to most strange folks she hasn't made a deal with. <laughs> so, to what do I owe the pleasure? Um, you know, one of my friends went missing and left a note saying they were going to meet with you. Yes. Well, that's one way to sour my night. Really? Oh, cool. You know about me? They never mentioned your involvement. Oh, the game's like making this sure thing, simple. Huh? I helped reprogram the back end on your OS so the AI code Hayden wrote for you would work properly with the mesh network. What? Seriously? Wait, what? what's the deal with this person, this Tomcat? They help program the back end of the OS so the AI code would work with the mesh, ne mesh network. I mean, this could be an allusion to um, the Apache uh, Foundation's Apache Tomcat, where a Tomcat's the web server, which can contain the applications. But that's kind of cool. Stressing lack of information on my own creation. Well, maybe if you weren't so full of yourself and started asking questions of other people, and start a bo instead of boasting about, look at me and my awesome computing power and how I'm such a unique robot. And, you know, if you start asking questions of other people, maybe you would learn things faster. Hayden never saw fit to inform me on what went into designing my programming. Is there anything else you can tell me? Mm, not much more on that end. I'm a crack shot at making the Lips OS dance to my tune, but Hayden's coding in your AI core is a whole different can of worms. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Sorry, doll. Anything else that I can help with? Um, wait, so you're not going to help me out in any way? Yeah, seriously, what's Jess's problem? Oh, don't you worry about Jess, man. She just don't have a lot of patience when talking to genotypical folks like us. Okay. She's had to deal with an awful lot of pricks. Cause, uh, it will. Um, cause she's a jerk? No, that ain't why. Come on. <laughs> Did you even look at her? You know how most folks are about hybrids. Wait. Since when do- well, I guess if I'm a journalist, I know this. You don't seem to be too well-versed in hybrid issues. That's true. Nah, I'd leave her alone if I were you. Fair enough. She's sharp enough on her own, but she's got friends in low places. Well, she does owe me a favor, for free. But I ain't sure I want to waste one on pulling your foot out of your own rear, you hear? <laughs> okay. How'd you know Hayden? Hayden and I met not long after my blackout expired, when he recruited me for my expertise in lifts. Oh, blackout? Whoa. He puzzled me at the time, since he's very sharp himself. I mean, he, he could have done the job blindfolded and boozy. Yeah, but he's busy. I think he just wanted someone working on it off the books. He ain't the most uh, straightforward kind of thing. Fair enough. Um. Oh, it's a powerful OS, and it's since been adapted to run on ROMs after they figured out how much more efficient it is. Well, yeah. It's focused on learning algorithms, so it can tailor itself to each user's habits. 
and it functions you're using a distributed mesh network for not essential public files. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can buy that. That seems actually reasonable. Um. Why can't I be rude? Besides, I could understand them just fine. Oh. Yeah, I don't think so. Why couldn't you? Yeah, I don't think you understand these things, Terry. Now, now, Fallon. I'll amuse your friend here. That's just a fancy way of saying all wrongs connect to all other wrongs. Within range. And they share all files the user has been tagged as private. Yeah, but, I mean, it raises questions about what if a file ceases to exist? What if a file is being modified in two places at the same time? How do you deal with these kind of concurrency issues and locks and permissions? And what if I want to deny permissions for some people but not for others? And what if I want other people to be able to modify the permissions of some of my files? And so the third-party people can or can't be able to access them. It's not simple, and you're pretending it is. It's handy in dense population areas like NeoSF since it can bypass regular telecom nodes to access the internet. No, that makes sense. Out the sticks, though, you're stuck connecting their regular old pipes. <laughs> yep. Okay. What was Hayden Mostly doing? That little you got there. Oh. Really? This dumb little thing? Well, I, I'm sure he had his fingers in lots of pies, but. Is all I knew about. Huh. I don't know. Yeah, why is Hayden missing? I can't avoid the thought that Hayden's disappearance has something to do with me based on his recent behavior. Wait, did Turing kidnap Hayden? Turing could be leading us on a fantastic ruse. Well, let's see. Uh, Hayden was pretty hush hush about his work on your creation, but if Parallax found out about it sometime, ooh. I might have changed things. No. Wait, wait. Don't give Turing any ideas here. It ain't always so good for a big company when their leading product declares independence. <laughs> I'm certain Hayden had some kind of intellectual property clause written into his contract with him. He would just get fired. Maybe even sued. Okay. I, I can't imagine they would disappear him. I mean, they ain't the CIA or anything. It's true. Oh, sure. <laughs> you might have even heard of me in the news. Where, about ten years ago, I hacked into Parallax's main ROM servers. Oh, well done. Ooh, caused one hell of a stink, if I do say so myself. Oh, that's what you mean by the blackout. Okay. People were arguing back and forth whether I was a kid genius or malicious criminal. Why not both? Um, most people you've seen play this don't keep being rude. <laughs> <laughs> Earned myself and enforced that blackout for a few years, but I think it was worth it for the prestige. Well, no kidding. Um, are you from the South? Probably North Carolina, dog. Tor, it's not the glitziest town in the world, but folks like the way the sun goes down. Okay. Still, this ain't a bad town for a southern town. Lots of clothes. I had to get a third walk-in closet. A third walk-in closet? So which is it? Kid genius or malicious criminal? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't really do it to steal anything, but I had to break an awful lot of eggs to crack my way in. Yeah, yeah, right. I chalk it up to the exuberance of youth, and now I try to stay on the straight now. So... Mostly. Sometimes. <laughs> oh. oh, my kid. Sometimes I treat this place like it's my own little back cave. Well, I mean, it kind of is. Uh, everybody knows who you are. You don't seem to much care. Well, you do care about uh, Jess over there, but you don't seem to know who all other patrons are. Um, why hack Parallax? 
parallax is a mighty big target. Bigger than the government. Sure. Alright, so how do we find Hayden? Yeah, not real sure, huh? But it would likely help if we knew why he wanted this in the first place. Hmm. Would it? How would that help? I'll stay here and ask around. People know me, and they sure ain't gonna talk to a newbie like yourself. Uh, well, that's nice. Why don't you hop back over to Hayden's place and grab the data cache out of his computer for me? We can go over his research notes and see if we can't find the reason for his being banished. Okay. If Parallax is involved, there's probably something we're not seeing. So. All the clues we can find. Wait, but Turing was telling me earlier that I couldn't hack into uh, that machine. I mean, if anybody could get me into Hayden's machine, it would be Tomcat here. The data cache would be the best place to start. Uh huh. Why? Good luck. Hmm. You keep out of trouble. If you say so. How's it going, Jess? Not even going to acknowledge this again. So be it. I saw you found Tomcat. What else do you want from me? Mm -hmm. Do you want a drink? <laughs> Ditto. Let's see. Um. um we do something else for now? Well, fine. Can I offer you? Oh. No. What kind of name is that? I don't know. It's just a name, you know. Let's see. Yeah, let's get one for the road. What do you have? Let's get. I don't know. I really don't drinking game. So many drinks these days. Drinkionary, the open alcoholopedia says. It's a surprise. You never know what it'll taste like. Tender's choice. Does that sound good? Yeah. That sounds really good. Ah, all right. Drinking game served. Now do I have the drinking game here somewhere? A nice refreshing drinking game. Let's look at it. It's a surprise. You never know. All right. Let's drink it. You drank your drink. All right, guys. Um, yeah, I guess this, this game does tell you to save often. Save. Sure, why not? Save as one. Because we're number one. Alright, let's head out. Um, map? So apparently we've got to go back to Hayden's place again. Um, apparently to get some sort of data cache slice thing. Oh! Wait. An ongoing investigation? Dude. Oh, it's playing 2064 read only memories. Um, I need to get in there. I, I don't know. Uh, so he's a set at level 2 guard mode, and any effort to make unauthorized entry will be met with non lethal force uh, to capacitate, or incapacitate. Cannot comment on ongoing investigations. Fine. Really? Oh. Well, go figure, you can't loiter in Neo San Francisco. Um. 
Go ahead and get moving. I don't know. We should stay right here. Oh, fine. Oh, brat. I did not expect the police to get involved so quickly. The situation is already growing out of our control. I suppose we don't have to hide the fact of Hayden being missing anymore. But <laughs> we do have to move faster. If you say so. Do you have any ideas on how to get in there and grab that data cache? Yeah, first we disable this robot and then we go stroll right in. Simple. Um. I don't think it's wise to rely on them. You don't like the Neo SFPD? Oh, you... you worry, Wart. You ruin everything. Um, wait. So you knew this. Oh no, you didn't know this. You're reading them now. And for somehow, like, you can't be completely oblivious to your environment. You must have been living in this Neo SFPD for quite a while. Surely you've heard such stories before. And you're gonna claim, oh well I didn't think it could happen to me. Okay, fine. Quiet, honest, and efficient. You and I can do that best. Honest, uh, quiet and efficient. Maybe they will get lucky and find Hayden, but we should continue investigations on our own. Why should I believe that Turing's not behind all this. How should I believe that Turing is honest? We'll just have to make sure we don't draw extra attention to Hayden's predicament. Okay. Now that I think about it, can you imagine how the police would react to a report being made by the world's first sapient robot? Nah. I really don't feel like being confiscated as evidence today. Ha. <laughs> Fine. I feel better already. So, I guess I have to follow up with my contact. Who would that be? I don't know. I found no such connection when I compiled your personal history. Lexi. She's kind of new to this jurisdiction, but she'll talk to me. Give me a moment. Oh, I see now. Yeah, you do. Okay. Must have missed that link in your history somehow. <laughs> and you call yourself you intelligent, buddy. Um you know consider actually no. Considering how much writing I do. In terms of writing I have a good net presence. Can you not compliment me on that? It makes anticipating your needs more difficult. Um Dude, my needs, food, water, clothing, shelter, internet. There we go. It's not that hard. Well, setting aside your unreasonable distaste for technology, I agree with your suggestion. Well, whatever. The online profile suggests that she might be willing to work with us off the books, so to speak. Since I would prefer to maintain the clandestine nature of this investigation for now. Really? Let us go and find Miss Rivers to request assistance. Well, I guess as long as you're saying clandestine for now. One day this will have to be made public. Yeah. Oh, right. Should I refresh my protocols for handling titles around Detective Rivers? Well, yeah. Actually, no. Um, yeah, if you want to keep all your teeth, sure. I, I don't even have any teeth. Oh, well, in that case, nothing to worry I about. Mean, done and done. We wouldn't want any social faux pas, would we? Um, actually, I want to see you be social faux pas, if that's okay. Now lead the way. Gosh, wasn't the first thing I suggested going to the police station? I guess we were going there. So, let's go. The Neo SF Police Station for the Richmond District. It's all the charm of a police department. 
see. Uh, look at dents. Seen better days. Can I read the dents? Let's use the milk on the dents. Will not fix them. Bummer. Can I interact with this crime status screen this way? It starts to broadcast. Really? You're going to deal with all the drunken, rowdy teens? Don't you have actual work to do? Desk. Ton of paperwork. Uh, let's use, oh, we can't access the computer. Fine. Pile of forms. Work's piling up over there. Wait, are we not in an information age? Why are they using paper? Just saying. <laughs> well, fine, fine, fine. So yeah, I can't douse the papers. So, guess we gotta talk to the Ram. But first, ask the Ram if it wants milk. Oh. Are you not gonna voice that? Defacing human property is a very serious offense. Defacing a police Ram is even worse. Alright, so... Don't need to show my ID to the police rom. It knows who I am. Well, duh. Of course it knows who I am. Oh, I can't even... That's questionably legal to listen in on what this rom is saying. Can we touch the rom? Oh, come on. It's just a robot. I'm sure it could handle that. An ED-64 police unit. ED-64. Emergency dispatch? I don't know. Alright. Welcome to the police station. Took you a few minutes to greet me, but how can you be of assistance? Hey, didn't I just see you a couple minutes ago? Well, okay, fine. Really? Really? Okay. Contact Detective Rivers. Oh. Oh, okay. So I have her authorization to go see Detective Rivers in Golden Gate Park. Okay. Sure. Sounds fun. Dude, she's in a park. How dangerous could it be? Um. Huh. Protests outside Genus are a hot human interest topic. Be feel free to note the assistance of the Neo SF Police Department in your article. Um. You're so boring, but fine. You can't tell me what to do. What if I don't want to have a good day? Okay, I guess there's nothing more to do here but to move. So we could go to the Golden Gate Park. Uh, apparently that's the extent of what we can do. So let's go. Wait, what's this? A carousel? Information about the carousel's history. Oh. I don't get to even hear, like, real information about the carousel's history. I wanted to know. This isn't a park rom. It's mine. Hey! Did you take a photo of me and my adorably precious Rom? Thanks.
Of course it did. I was the one taking the photo. Oh yeah? I've got a present for your Rom. That is the smell of justice. Also milk. Apollo Mark 7. How about that? A sharply dressed woman. Would you... Headphones. Okay. <laughs> Wearing a hat on a breezy day. Yeah, maybe don't wear such a large hat. You ever think of that? Wait, where's your ROM? Okay, fine. We'll talk with your this water ROM thing. Does it want milk? No, I'm not trying to poison the water hole. Um. Wow. I guess they are cheap headphones. It's a public park ROM. It roams its designated area to offer water and directions to tourists, and accepts donations. No, I would like some hot, scalding water. All right. Please have a nice day. You can't tell me what to do. Although you did say please, so I can't be too mean. Hello, I'm Alfie, I-83. How may I help you? Would you like some cool, refreshing water? You're not much of a conversationalist, are you? All right. Please have a nice day. All right, so let's move on. Froyo. Use an item. Super spoiled milk on Froyo. Did you know Froyo is not supposed to be made with spoiled milk? Because it's not. Ever. Um. So, let's talk to the Froyo stand. It's not voice activated. Well, that's pretty lame. The entire stand was destroyed. You know, I bet that water bot did it. That water bot was jealous that the Froyo stand was getting all the business, and so it attacked the Froyo stand. Maybe this is the incident that Alexi's looking into. The distraught owner of a Froyo stand. Can't you see him? Is he here? Uh, no. Just got taro flavor in. Oh, well, that's probably why. Can't you see I'm busy? Here? I mean, taro is like messing with fate. No, you're actually talking about taro as opposed to taro. But wow. whatever. Those headphones are pretty dang long. Yeah, they are. Be jealous. Look, I've gone through a lot. Okay, uh, how about some milk? Yogurt is actually made by fermenting milk with special yogurt cultures. Then frozen to make frogging. Yeah. Tell me something I didn't know. I can't use spoiled milk to make yogurt. Dude, I thought you made froyo, not yogurt. I <laughs> push the button on the water pump. If you want water, I'm sure that public park rom we saw on our way in can help. Yeah, but he wants a donation. Well, I guess there's a public park ROM, though. It's like that... Oh, an art studio. That's cool. Wow. Except for its lack of music. And its inability to be explored or appreciated in any way. Um... Oh, it's a public art studio. Very nice. Alright, let's check out the police ROM. Run, don't walk, to run, donut walk. New menu includes the Cronutberg and the Ridley Biscotti. Damn. Gotta put up with ads on there. <laughs> fine, fine. So, Lexi, how's it hanging? 
Can I offer you some super spoiled milk? I know who you are. Well, of course you do. I know who you are. Actually, these are like dollar headphones, so they're not that nice. Uh, let's use Lexi. Okay. That's Detective Rivers. Um. Fine. Hey there. Long time. Yep. Long Take time. A few minutes to wrap this up, okay? Mm -hmm. I swear you wouldn't believe the amount of paperwork I have to file over a damn wrecked Froyo stand. Jeez. By the way, how's your sister doing? Ha! <laughs> wouldn't you like to know? Don't rush on my account. Just a man's life on the line. Oh, I won't. It's up to me and the entire crack detective unit at the Neo SFPD to protect the city from the horrors of the spectral robot threat. Okay, a spectral robot threat. Just hold your horses and let me get this done before you start twisting my arm about whatever it is you need. I mean, it's just a guy who could be dying. Fine. I don't know if you've heard, but we got some phantom robot on the loose that everyone is calling Wonder Boy. Oh, yeah, no. I heard... I just wasn't listening. Supposed to be a hero of the people or something, but I have no idea what smashing a Froyo stand has to do with it. Well, obviously because Froyo is a crime against humanity. Ice cream is where it's at. I guess. It's just a bunch of kids screwing around at night and getting a thrill out of some life vandalism. It could be. But the brass said to take it seriously, so that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. I'm just saying, Aiden could be dying right now, and you're taking this seriously. It's not like I have real cases I could be working on, or actual criminals to be hunting down or anything. Oh, okay. Well, good to know. Oh, if I had known that this is all they would give me, I never would have transferred. Um, yeah, why'd you move here then? I transferred because the credits were good. I thought being in a bigger city would mean I'd get to work some bigger cases. Instead, I've stopped chasing ghosts and dead ends. Hmm. Well, I mean, you could have asked more about that before transferring. Let's see. I'm too young for full detective. I'm too big of a hothead. I've got a history. I have augments. Take your pick. So... Yeah. So yeah, I have plenty of spare time to help you with whatever you got. Oh, okay, good. It's gotta be better than dealing with this crap. Hold on one sec. Let me steal a break from this guy. Sure. So, fill me in. What's going on? Yeah, old friend of mine Hayden's gone missing. Oh, shoot, that's no good. Uh, how long have they been gone? I'll have a hard time getting a focused effort on the case immediately unless there's evidence of foul play. Unfortunately, Detective, things aren't precisely that serious. Yeah. I am Hayden's personal wrong, and I was witness to the kidnapping. Witness? Hang on. You ran away. I can assure you Hayden was taken by force, and that time is of the essence. Just prior to the incident, he instructed me to seek help should anything bad happen. Mm-hmm. I now believe he has been expecting trouble of this magnitude. Okay. We need your help if we're going to track him down. Damn. All right, then. I'll do what I can to open up an investigation. I can't guarantee I'll be put on the case, conflict of interest and all, but I can sure keep tabs on things for you. Conflict of interest? It just sounds like you want some more Froyo. Just saying. Yeah, so that's why we want your help. Is so you can, like, chase your tail. You yourself have already cast doubt on your superior's judgment. Unfortunately, we share the sentiment. 
In fact, we know there is already some kind of currently ongoing investigation. Uh huh. We were stopped from entering Hayden's apartment by an NSFPD ROM. That's why we came to you. Yeah. We were hoping you would be empathetic to our cause. Actually, wait a second. So, we dispatched a detective here to deal with the Froyo stand, but um, one of the top researchers in Neo SF um, area goes missing. Their apartment is broken into, um, and, like, you don't even send a detective over there. That's pretty weird. I mean, Froyo must be pretty big in Neo SF. I'm just saying. Just saying. You know, you're a bit chattier than most ROMs. I guess it makes sense that Parallax employees get the shiniest new toys, huh? Oh. <laughs> Sounds like somebody doesn't like being called a shiny new toy. I'll see what's going on in the department. I don't know what I can do if someone inside actually is dirty, but I can pass information to you if I decide my superiors aren't taking things seriously. What do you mean, if? I mean, we just established how important Froyo is for Neo SF, and how little attention's being given to this possible assault case. I mean, either you just completely distrust Turing, and I'm not sure why, because you know the apartment was broken into. Um, at least Turing says that, like, the door was broken open and had to be replaced and all that. I mean, that's a pretty easily verifiable claim, I would imagine. Um, so either Turing is taking us all for a loop here, or, um, yeah, you just don't really care too much about break-in and assault and kidnapping cases, and you just think Froyo is, like, super important. They wouldn't have left only one bot by the door if it was something important enough to squash. Hopefully it's unrelated. Huh. Something important enough to squash. They wouldn't have only left one bot by the door. Um. Okay. Back to you on it soon. Just relax, and we'll figure this out. Promise. Oh, I get it. Squash meaning just make sure the case goes absolutely nowhere. So maybe they just don't realize um, the magnitude of that case. Um. Yeah. Let us in. No way. Not gonna happen. You sure? If there's already an investigation, I'm not gonna let you just waltz in and tamper with evidence, cover up or not. Well... At least give me a day to make sure they're doing the job right. Come on! You used to play by your own rules. Don't you try to pull that guilt shit on me! <laughs> Why not? I know you and I have gotten into a few scrapes in the past, but that vigilante stuff gets real old after a while. Oh. Wait. You're just saying you want you you like your new job better than the old one. Is that what you're saying? It's why I took this nice stable job in the city. Well, fine. If I'd done it sooner, I'd still be with your sister. Oh. Well, yeah. Whose fault is that? You're gonna put Hayden's life in danger because you don't want to stir the pot. Versus, you know I can handle myself. You've been there. You know that isn't what I meant. <laughs> you don't even have proof there's dirty cops in on it, and I can't work off a hunch, not on an accusation that big. Okay. You think me feeding info to a journalist of all people isn't bad enough? Okay, fair enough. Um... I just want to help my friend. Alright, fine. I'll get you into the damn department. Wow. Be careful, okay? Okay. I know you think I'm just being paranoid, but the city is tense right now. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Hearing that you said something right, along with, that's not gonna work on me. And then, you know, I actually got a Steam achievement there, um, for persuasion. So go me. and everything going on, you might be poking around in a hornet's nest. Yeah, that's true. Get a weapon of some kind and stay safe. Okay. Yeah. No, I know why you care about me. It's not about me. 
Um. You do that. I'll radio ahead to the bot at the place. Okay. Find out. Sure. Now, where do I obtain a weapon? Better get out of here. Hey, you, Froyo guy. Come along to the station, and we'll get this report filed. Who? Me? Psst. I've got to attend my stand. You call that a stand? Really? <laughs> the crap. It's not going anywhere, and the robot I posted will make sure nobody messes with the crime scene. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Later. I'll be in touch. I don't know. You're telling me that it doesn't let me buy a weapon. I'm gonna take my chances exploring and see if I can find stuff. Also, can I take some Froyo? Oh, fair enough. I'd rather have a mango hassy. Um, anything more to say to this person? Uh, not really. All right, let's go to the map. Uh, Golden Gate Park, NSFPD station, Stardust, Hayden's apartment. Um, given all these locations to select from, let's go to the club. And there's nothing more other than the club to do here, so... Welcome to Stardust. Yeah. Let's see, can you tell me... Um, the height seems wrong. Were you wearing platform heels on BMB then? Oh. What do you have? I want a weapon. Can you tell me where to get a weapon? Apparently not. Though I get tons of drinks to choose from. Beer. Yeah, let's get beer. So many drinks these days. Remind me, what's in that? Drinkionary, the open alcoholopedia says. A local brewed beer. Nothing too sharp or bitter. Just a nice, crisp, weedy beer. Ice cold. Does that sound good? Nah, maybe something else. What? Um There's a lot of things to choose from, aren't there? Hassy Spike. So many drinks these days. Drinkionary, the open alcoholopedia says. Shot of Hassy Hot and a shot of Korean soju. Serve hot. Does that sound good? Yeah. Sounds good. Ah, all right, you got it. Coming right up. Let's have our Hassy. Serve hot. Well, let's consume it. Um, let's see, can you tell me where to get a weapon? I don't think she wants to talk to you. Oh, you think? Okay, how about you? Hi there. Hi there. Yeah, I've got to find a way into the apartment. I don't have any other leads for you to hunt down just yet, but I'll keep looking. Hmm. Have you tried reasoning with them? It's reasoning with the police. Maybe you could try coming at it from another angle. It, just let me know if you find out anything. We gotta keep our heads together on this one. Okay. Well, I should get on back to searching the mesh. Let me know if you find out anything useful. So, I take it you're not going to give me a weapon, then. Hi there. Hi there. Yeah, I guess we've been through this dialogue. And there's new, no new dialogue here. Maybe you could... Gotta keep our heads... Well, I should get on back to... Wait, can I not go to the VIP area? Oh, well. Guess not. Uh, let's leave. And then, I guess go to the map. And before we go to Hayden's apartment, um, save. This game assures me that there's no automatic saves, so... Yeah, we have to save uh, manually. 
Okay, continue. Uh, map. Let's go to Hayden's apartment. All right. Oh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Police are on. Let's use the headphones. Oh, ads. Right. Um. I have permission from Detective Rivers to enter. Um. Good luck. Fine. Plant. A window. Let's use the... Oh, I can't open it? Okay. Random door. Let's use milk on the random door. Dude, it's free milk, though. Who could say no to that? No response. Let's ring the bell. Ooh, there's a dog. Oh, fine. We'll leave the neighbors alone. Um, seems to have been recently replaced. Oh, nice. What? Dude, Turing. I know you were sending us on a quest around the world, but... Um... If this is your idea of art, um, you might need to rethink it. No, 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 no. Our apartment. My home. Who could have done this? Why? Wait, what's this? You're talking about a home. You're a robot. What does the human revolution want with Hayden? You get a game over if you knock on the door enough times? Well, damn. I missed out on Why that. They break our things? Why would they break your things? Why would they... Dude, it's do. it's modern art. Enjoy the experience. This place, these items, they're all I have with Hayden. Okay. What if he's gone for good? I mean, that's the more important question here. Items are replaceable. Hayden's not replaceable. I still don't get how this upsets you more than the fact that Hayden's missing. I'm still wondering if you're still pulling my chain on all of this. Um. Alright. Oh, that sounds too difficult. Histrionics is a good word. Torn up plant. Yes, yeah, see, they were methodical about disposing of the plant. Less methodical about um, what they did with this window here. Um. Oh. The residents call security on you, and after the shutter closes, Turing asks, what are we going to do now? Your careless behavior has ruined everything. In fairness, I did knock, and they didn't answer. I know they don't like Parallax, because they think advanced technology in general is bad, but they spend most of their time going after hybrids and cyborgs. Yeah. I'll run some deep mesh net searches and see if anything turns... Alright, um, anything more to explore here other than the obvious? I think I'm forced to confront this. Pure. Okay. Sure. Humanity has changed rapidly in the last century. Hybridization of the human genome and cybernetic augmentation has, in the human revolution's viewpoint, Diluted the purity and strength of the species. Okay. So, I'm supposed to find something in this apartment. Uh, 
Okay, so using an item is not going to help me find anything. Um, so... Oh, now I can explore the empty desk. It's empty. You think? I don't know, we haven't tried playing the video games yet. So, the data cache is no longer our main objective, but it would be nice to know where it is and why it was taken. Okay. I wonder what the human revolution would need the data cache for anyway. <laughs> exactly. That I would put the data cache in the video games. Nobody would ever find it there. They'd have to beat the video games. Um, which as we saw from my arcade playthrough would not be a feasible goal. Um, do, 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 do. Maybe they're just vandals. Yeah, maybe nobody cares about this data cache as much as you do. You think? Okay. And you're telling me this now? Why? Perhaps we could Uh oh. This game does not auto save. So please be sure to save frequently. Well, now it tells you. Well, that was fun. Oh, just kidding. Um, in fairness, I have seen some a partial playthrough done by Game Cola, so I have some idea of how the game plays out. But at some point soon, we'll reach a point where um, I'll actually be venturing into new territory soon. I might still be somehow managing to give the game crap throughout the playthrough. We'll see. I have spent the past 30 minutes calculating the odds of you being indefinitely incapacitated or immobilized. For example, um, to continue giving the game crap, um, 30 minutes calculating. Now, this is for somebody who says they could spend like a quintillion or quadrillion cycles bypassing the data setup program. But it's easier just to run it. Now, if he's got a quadrillion clock cycles to run, um, and presumably can do so in under 30 minutes, and he spent this last 30 minutes calculating how the odds of myself being indefinitely incapacitated or immobilized, how many quadrillions of cycles has he spent? I mean, he could have, like, cured cancer or something with that kind of computation power. Also, doesn't he spend most of his cycles... Well, yeah, he did say he spends most of his computing power on his complex personality. But his personality wouldn't be this kind of calculation, would it? I'm relieved to find my pessimism was misplaced and that you appear to be okay. Wait, what's this about pessimism? Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure that's the intention. Um, yeah. Your voice is even more agonizing than usual. Thankfully, that headache is your biggest worry. Oh, uh, okay. Very differently if our assailants were serious about doing us harm. Um, yeah, but if our assailants were serious about doing us harm, what about that police robot station outside? Um, I don't know. So, in summary, you know, I'm really starting to suspect Turing here. And this comes from me, I'm, I don't know how this game ends. 
but Turing is really looking like a suspect here. And how fantastic would it be if, like, the final chapter of this game were a 180 and you had to come back and confront Turing about everything that happened throughout the entire game? It took me two minutes to reboot and call an ambulance. Uh-huh. When we left, I noticed they had done the same thing to the NSFPD ROM that was standing post. It takes a lot of power to crash one of those, even temporarily. Wait. So you also claimed earlier that you have better than human hearing. And yet you're saying that they attacked the NSFPD ROM in the same manner. But apparently you didn't hear that. I'll never understand Turing. Serious military hardware like that is difficult to obtain. But that type of non-lethal electrical field would interrupt my systems as well. Yeah, I'm sure it would make some noise though, right? Yeah, uh, that's totally fair. Likely a mil spec neuro scrambler. And yeah, could be. Um why do they just attack us and leave? And um Hmm. Yeah. If we walked in on them while they were searching the apartment for Hayden's files, I can understand them stunning us to make their escape. Mm-hmm. But the probability that they're actually after me, or rather the research behind my creation, seems high. Okay. Leaving me when I was so vulnerable makes no sense. I mean, this seems, again, to just justify my theory, like, Turing is very interested in his own creation. Yeah, who do you think did this? I now believe my original hypothesis to have been correct. Hayden must have been kidnapped by a powerful organization looking to get control of his research. Okay. Trashing our apartment may have been a cover for the theft of the data cache we were looking for. Okay. Um. Hmm. Uh, I want you to lead them to the rest of Hayden's research. Um, yeah, no, I'm just saying. He seems to bring up this thing about, he's so curious about himself. He brings it up all the time, I want to say. But anyway, uh, maybe they don't want, maybe they want you to lead them to the rest of his research. Yeah, how about that? But if they don't yet have Hayden's research, we may still have time to rescue him before something really bad happens. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Turing. I didn't. They assaulted us from behind, and nothing showed up on my optics before I was disrupted. Yeah, I... But did you not hear anything? They either had cloaking of some kind, or were extraordinarily careful while making their way into the apartment. <sighs> okay. My optics, while not top of the line, are better than an off-the-shelf ROMs. Uh huh. And the big EM pulse and knocking out the police robot. Oh, uh, before I forget, here are your belongings. The nurses had me hold on to them for you until you awoke. Oh, okay. Cool. Here's your ID card. Don't lose this again. Hey. Here are those headphones you reviewed. Sweet. Dollar headphones. Still looking stylish. I noticed the article on your computer before. Good job getting published. Well, uh, all in day's work. Oh, and here's your spoiled milk. Sweet. Luckily, the hospital staff didn't find your carrying of a carton of spoiled milk around to be a cause for concern. Oh, good. Just let me know when you want to leave. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Are you talking about Hayden Weber? Uh, no. I'm talking about a different Hayden. Alright, so I'm actually going to save in a different file because you mentioned that achievement thing. Uh, menu, save to file 2.
Save game as two. Done. All right, back to the game. Well, <laughs> uh, let's put on some headphones. Oh, I can't leave the music playing. Bummer. Um, well, well, well. Curtains. Look at curtains. Standard hospital curtain. Low quality fabric. Tacky, sterile color. And steam cleaned beyond recognition. Oh, fine. We'll open the curtains. But yeah, no, we were talking with the, about a different Hayden. So, sorry. Um, let's use the window. Oh, that's cool. You can actually appreciate the warmth from the sun. Uh, hum out a little ditty. Um, let's use our ID card on the window. Oh, okay. Uh, let's check out whatever this device is back in the medical station. Um, let's talk to the medical station. Uh, sure. Um. Uh, examine. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm afraid I can't do that. Oh, bummer. Yeah, I, I'm sure I'll have to go back and get all the achievements by pushing all the things at some point. Um. Huh. <laughs> He's sitting right there. See, I don't want to mess with that. Or do I? Well, fine. Bleeps and bloops. Okay, fair enough. I suppose we'll talk with this fellow. But first, look at him. Seems he's my roommate. Okay, can I put the curtain back? Um, apparently not. Use bed. Okay, fine, we'll talk with him. Sorry for being a nosy Nancy. Hayden's an old friend of mine. They sounded all too familiar. Has anything happened to him? Nope. Were you listening in on our conversation? I hate to be the one to tell you, but privacy screens are hardly soundproof. Okay. However, if this situation concerns us both, uh, perhaps we can help each other. I don't know, man. Yeah, who are you? Of course, I've not yet introduced myself. Yes? So who are you? My name is Dr. Yannick Fairline, and I'm the founder and former CEO of System One Software, now owned by Parallax. Well, that's cool. He is telling the truth. As far as I can intuit from information on the meshnet. <sighs> and I do recall Hayden mentioning a Dr. Fairlight at least once in passing at some point. Well, okay, that's comforting. You see, I don't fight. I won't press you for details, but perhaps I could be of some assistance. Hmm? I remember my association with Hayden fondly. I'd be happy to help in any way I can. Crazy other theory. Um, Hayden is Dr. Fairlight or something crazy like that. And Turing is just completely out of his mind based on having not seen Hayden in forever. Um. What do you want? Yeah. But right now, someone I grew very fond of is in great danger. Wait, who would that be? I simply wish to see Hayden home again, safe. Okay, how can you help? Ah, I can think of a few ways. I still have some contacts in Parallax and can put out some 
quiet cleavers. Maybe they'll know something. Sounds promising. I will admit, I don't have much to offer until there's more information. Is there anything you can tell me? I'd like to help in any way I can. What did you find at Hayden's apartment? Um. The first time we went. Oh. Nothing. had been pillaged and the human revolution had spray painted slogans all over our walls all over the walls i mean specifically the floor and the desk and the window but not all over hayden's computer was gone and we were assaulted and now we're here injured and losing our trail with each passing second also what was up with the stone apparently thrown through the window of the nth story of that apartment. That didn't make any sense. Frustratingly in the dark and running out of time. Unless somebody climbed up the fire escape to throw that, or I don't know. Maybe it was the neighbors. I fear Hayden is slipping out of reach. I am failing him. Yeah, you are. I'm very sorry to hear that. I wish I could do more. Hayden's company was most enjoyable. Yep, so... Yeah, we're all moping about. Still not taking this case to the police. Still feeling bad about things. He said former CEO. Ah, uh, yes. As I've mentioned, Parallax acquired my company, System One Software. I accepted a CTO position and additionally served on Parallax's board for several years. The other directors and I had a difference of opinion about the direction the organization should take. You don't say. I mean, you got bought out, and if they had the same intention with direction as you had, you would use a merger rather than a buyout. The non-centralized data scheme for most ROMs used today seemed ludicrous at the time. We were playing with fire. Dangerous, morally Um, you know, maybe you should have invented a bucket of water. So when Parallax's servers were destroyed by hobbies and hackers, well, <laughs> needless to say, it was a PR nightmare. Everything halted until we could get the damage fixed. We're talking about Tomcat and others, right? And since the security hmm. work that goes into maintaining the integrity of near impenetrable mesh net is astronomically expensive. We had our share of disagreements. Okay. And I was voted off the board and they went on without me. Do I have hard feelings? Of course. Who wouldn't? Wait, so... There's something significant between difference of opinion versus I'm going to do something so terrible that they'll vote me off the board. I feel like he's not telling me something. In the end, though, it really doesn't matter. I'm an old rich man with enough hobbies to last the next two decades. Wait. Wait, you just told me that there's this, like, big moral crisis and you're playing with fire and you don't have water and you have a disagreement about the direction of the company and now you're saying, oh, well... You know, all that stuff doesn't even matter. That's kind of a selfish perspective. Um. His research? No. Not so much. Okay. Great. I remember at the time he had interest in advanced machine sapiens. And that is the realm of science fiction. Hmm. <laughs> Well, honestly, people say that AI is just what computers can't do today. And tomorrow, AI will be something different. She was quite clever. Very convincing. But you could tell she did not contain the spark of life. Wait, are we talking about Detective Rivers? No. No. I assume that you are a 
mother of his creations. Yes, I am. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Turing. <laughs> what if my sister is a robot? Um, did you say she? Ah, uh, yes. She was quite insistent. said that she had picked out the color for her casing herself. Pastel pink. Still, I must assume you are far more advanced than she if you are spearheading the search for your creator. Sure. Perhaps I should have had more faith in Hayden's little hobby. You think? Do you know what became of her or where she might be now? Hayden has told me so little of his past research. I'm sorry, Turing. It was a long time ago, and I'm afraid my memory is not what it used to be. Well, how about can you tell me anything about her other than pastel pink? If any of my contacts in Parallax make mention of your uh, erstwhile sibling, I'll pass it on to you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Fairlight. Hayden and I made our acquaintance when the two companies first underwent the merger. Wait, I thought it was a buyout. He was a young hotshot researcher working in the search data correlation sector. He was assigned to find the best ways to integrate Parallax's own collection and analysis tools into System One's MIPS operating system. That sounds like a fun task. He was a bit much to handle at times, honestly. Away. What are you doing here? The chair you find me in is an advanced diagnostic and life support run. Its development is one of my hobbies, so to speak. It monitors my vitals and administers medications as necessary to keep my body stable. I likely would have perished long ago without it, or at uh. least would have been severely bedridden. Okay. It requires frequent maintenance, and I'm here to have it examined. There's a particular fellow at this hospital who is the only one I trust to run the correct diagnostics and fine-tune things to my exact needs. It's the same way you might get your car serviced, making sure everything's in check. It's too integral to my health to count on just luck. Sure. Unfortunately, uh, many critically injured patients were rushed into surgery all at once. My appointment has been pushed back. Also, unfortunately, many critically injured patients were rushed, rushed into surgery all at once. I mean, that seems like a more unfortunate thing than your appointment getting pushed back, but sure. The hospital administrators placed me here with a resting patient so as not to be disturbed. Okay. I don't think they expected you to awaken quite as quickly as you did. That's probably true. It's been very interesting speaking to you, Dr. Fairlight. Um. I suppose I should respect you for your honesty, <laughs> though it may be ill informed. Okay. I'll be blunt with you. I'll check that out. My connections could prove more valuable to you and your safety than you realize. Okay. Goodness aside, I only have the intention of helping my old friend. But, okay, sure. It seems a bit unproductive to say no. <laughs> it's homework. Calculate percent error. Oh, yeah, sure. Zero seems about right. Now, if you're willing to hear me out, I think I might have a lead in mind for you two. Oh, a lead. You said you found human revolution slogans spray painted on the wall. Uh, we shouldn't have told him that. 
He's making up information now. I am acquaintances with the man leading the current human revolution protests at the Genus Clinic. Cool. His name is Brian Mulberry. Oh, that's a nice name. After an introduction from me, he may be willing to shine some light on that particular event. Maybe. Um, how do you know this Brian Mulberry? Ah, well, when I exited Parallax, I sought out like-minded individuals. We worked together to prevent a full deployment of the MeshNet system. Okay. Brian Mulberry was one such person. We did not succeed in our efforts, obviously. Well, yeah. So, it's partly your fault that the human revolution's going on. But, yes, our motivations aligned for one brief time, and I gained his respect from it. <laughs> that can be useful for you. <laughs> so, you gained his respect, and yet he's participating in the human revolution. Uh, allegedly, the human revolution... Um, did stuff to our apartment, like vandalized it. Um, presumably they're out making a big stink elsewhere. And you're not doing anything about it? You must be busy. Ah, of course. Please, do not let me delay you any further. Okay. Good luck, Turing. I don't think Hayden's faith in you was misplaced. You are an impressive piece of technology. Wait, he's saying Fairlight's hair on his background sprite is ugly. Eh, I don't know, it's okay. It looks silly. Thank you, Dr. Fairlight. We'll be in touch. Perhaps deliberately so. Should I call downstairs to have you discharged? Can't I just leave? Yeah, okay, fine. You are one lucky dog. I know. Didn't I tell you to be careful? Do you get it now? Dude, I was careful. I can't be around to pull your ass out of the fire all the time anymore. I don't even know how I would have handled the Board of Inquiry or your sister if you'd actually been hurt. Oh, but because I wasn't hurt, it's going to make your task easier? Lack of prowess. This is all because of my failure. Well, yeah. It's my fault. Yeah, it is. Sure, because the robot fresh off the assembly line is going to know how to handle this kind of thing better than the supposedly hard boiled journalist you're carting around. <laughs> That's good. Well said. All right, see you around. Oh, the first fully sapient machine. I creating me as the main factor behind Hayden's disappearance beyond his day-to-day -day research for Parallax. My name is Turing. Ooh. Okay. Hi, Turing. <laughs> well, that is a damn bigger problem than you first let on, huh, old pal? Well, yeah. First machine sapient are going to have things to say about that. Especially the human revolution. Ugh. This is exactly what I wanted to avoid. Yep. You sure know how to get yourself dropped in the drink. Yep. Just get it together, both of you. Oh, fine. I don't want you to get hurt, and it sounds like you're stumbling into a really dangerous situation. Plus, I'm starting to think that you were right. Oh. Okay, well, good. 
one higher up in the department is trying to delay any search into Hayden's disappearance. All right. Here's the story. Apparently, the investigations you ran into this morning were about the lock on the apartment door being reported broken by a neighbor. Sure. The building couldn't reach Hayden, so they went ahead and got it fixed on their own, but the NSFPD sent a bot to check things out and guard the place for a while afterward, right? Oh, well, yeah. Standard procedure, treating it as a break-in. Have someone there for when Hayden shows up. Okay. Obviously, you and I know there's a bigger story. But when I filled out the missing person report, I was informed in no uncertain terms that I am to wait an entire 48 hours before I can upgrade the existing case. Maybe because your department's busy? Why? Just on the off chance the door being busted and Hayden being missing are unrelated and my search threw something up for the completion of the break-in report. I mean, it makes sense. Hey, there's a problem if you're so by the book you're getting paper cuts. I don't know. I don't know. And that was before all of this happened. The chief's not happy about whoever took the bot out. That's who they're after now. They won't even care if Hayden never showed. Hmm. <laughs> Today's assault and the vandalization of our apartment will only make the entire situation more confusing and sensitive for the police. It's almost as if we shouldn't have gone back to the apartment. There's too many moving parts to piece anything together, and it's not fun trying to argue with the bureaucrats that one thing happened over another. These little incidents of smashing shit and spray paint sound more like Froyo Stand 2.0 to them than a serious abduction. Hmm. Do they not know about Parallax? Very useful as a witness to the kidnapping without explaining the makeup of my being to the entire department, which will only scandalize things further. Learn it all. Wow. Good to hear that Turing is afraid of things. I don't know. Like, he's such a pessimist when there's something he doesn't want to do, and such an optimist when there's something he does want to do. Look, it's not being squashed completely. I don't think anyone's been bought. Also, Lexi is freaking out over just standard operating procedure. If you didn't have that procedure, then, I mean... But until there's undeniable proof Hayden was taken by force, they're going to care more about the poor doorknob and some paint on the walls than him being missing. I don't think it's that simple. Which means somebody definitely has some influence. Enough to buy themselves time by forcing me to follow protocols to a team. I mean, do your bosses not normally force you to follow protocol? Not that I will, but I'm gonna have to keep things quiet. It sounds like it's going to be up to us. Yeah, so stop messing around. There's certainly a story here, but if you keep botching your moves, you'll blow it. Okay. I'd really rather you not be involved at all, but I know that isn't gonna happen at this point. <laughs> I've got a bad feeling people are going to end up dead over this. I don't want you to be one of them, buddy. And I really don't want to be the one making that call to your sister. Please. Yeah, no, you, you'd rather be making a much more positive call to my sister. Um. Fine, you got it. There we go. Just here. Take this. Use it if you have to. Sweet. Use it well. It's not. But this is a medium range electrolaser pistol. Okay, so this one's hopefully it's safer. A low power laser to create a channel of ionized gas to complete a circuit between the gun and the target, then discharges a considerable amount of current into the air. That sounds extremely dangerous if that laser gets interrupted and you be you're the one who ends up getting shocked instead. Also, a, low, a low-power laser could be pointed in your direction, um, and the ionized charge would be shot right at you. Think of it as a wireless taser of the older variety. Yeah, now this seems way more dangerous than a taser. This is a more suitable personal defense weapon, and it is legal to carry in the OSF without a license. Like I said, you, you're very likely to injure yourself with this. The neural scrambler we were attacked with uses a powerful electromagnetic field to disrupt electrical signals in the target's nervous system. That's far more dangerous and prone to be permanently damaging to the target. Huh. You got lucky. You sure about that? I told you to get a weapon, but you didn't, so I picked it up on the way here. Be smart with it. 
Okay. Me either. I'll be in touch if I find anything out, but don't hold your breath. All the right. are going to keep leaning on me to do nothing. All right, Detective Rivers. Back to the grind, I guess. See ya. Yeah, actually, why were you not working? What are you doing here? Thank you for your time, Detective Rivers. You should talk to the receptionist and formally check out before we go anywhere. I don't know about that. We should also look for Dr. Fairlight's assistant, Mr. Decker. He should be somewhere around. All right, can we leave? Oh, seriously? Well, very well. Let's talk to the cleaning room. Just warbles at me. Okay. Let's use the headphones. An intense desire to clean and scrub. Very well. Let's use the cleaning room. It bleeps cheerfully. Let's pat it again. Neo SF littlest hero. Yeah. Okay. You're reminded of your much less healthy plant at home. The Hassy vending machine. Look, they have a Hassy machine. A hassy machine. Okay. Oh, I have to use my ID card. Well, fine. Very good. A half and hassy. The best? Yes. How much of these can I drink? That taste is so refreshing, right? Sure, why not? A Hassy Zero. What does Hassy refer to? Does Hassy refer to something outside the game? That taste is so I've read that a lot of people have switched over from their favorite colas and energy drinks to just Hassy. Does that refer to something outside of the game though, I wonder? Okay. Resting woman. <laughs> You're gonna lose the zapper so fast. Mysterious man. Ah, this one has a mugshot. Don't zap him. He's barely moving. Use mysterious man. Fine. Guess we'll chat with him. Hello. My name's Leon Decker. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, okay, if you say so. Fairlight messaged ahead that I needed to pass one of his cards on to you. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. You got his card, Thanks we're done. For taking your time. He really gets in one of his moods when the chairs get fixed. The last gala he organized was full of unsavory types. He's probably happy to help folks whose pockets aren't deeper than their thoughts. Huh. Yeah, boss said you'd have a few for me. I'm not really supposed to answer anything too private, but <laughs> take your best shot. It's good voice acting. Um, what's your story? Probably not as exciting as you hope. Oh. I grew up in Montana on a family farm. I didn't have my pa's farm hands, so I joined the military as soon as I could, like my grandpaps. Hey, you said this wasn't exciting, and now you're off to the military? Came home looking to do something a whole lot quieter. I didn't know at the time how boring quiet could be. Uh huh. <laughs> but hey, I'll take it over to shot at. Okay, why do you think Far Doctor Fairlight's I helping? In that chair all day is very entertaining. Yeah. You know, the old man's talked to me about the things he used to do in his glory days. I'm sure he told you about when he was the head of some big companies. So he did. He was cold, ambitious took down anyone with half a mind to get in his way. Okay. I think once he aged, he realized how lonely that kind of life can be. Yeah, that's a fair point. 
helping people is the only way you can feel like you're still doing something. But hey, what do I? I just spend all my time. <laughs> oh, uh, mostly gopher work, to be honest. So, yeah, he's doing professional work. It started when I was just out of the military. I was looking for a gig from someone who wouldn't care that I was an army rep. North Korea made that hard. Really? The old man pays me to guard his life, run a few errands for him, and play substitute army candy for most of the charity dollars. Substitute arm candy. Okay. Not terribly exciting, but I've already had enough excitement to last me another 30 years. Huh. Well, good for you. No problem. I'll be around if you know where to look. You have a good day now. Alright. Let's see. Can I leave now? You should talk to the Oh, fine. We'll talk with the receptionist after we use the couch. Nope. We're going to the, use the couch. Placard. Sign-in instructions. All right. Receptionist, receptionist. Let's talk with receptionist number two. Possible cranial trauma. Oh, okay. Let's see. Um, does not compute. Ha. <laughs> Say program to focus only on your well-being. Um, I don't know. That's that's a pretty weak expletive, anyhow. Also, the phrase "a bucket of bolts" is a derogatory term to refer to a robot uh, that is comprised of bolts. Well, aren't you a few screws loose of a, of a bucket of bolts? be detained against my will, but I'll have to say that um, the hospital is released from um, responsibility, <laughs> ah, legalese. This visit has expended the last of, years, of your year's governmentally mandated healthcare credits. Wait, what was that middle part? Lastly, you'll be required to provide payment or proof of private insurance for further visits or routine or emergency medical care. Oh. That's mean. Your medical billing makes me glad I'm synthetic. Yeah. You should look for more paying journalism work before you get shot again. Oh. Yeah, that's a good thought. Well, we're free to leave. Why not head back home first, yes? I'm sure you'd like the chance to shower, at least. I don't know. For such a clean place, it sure seems to have left you feeling foul. Nice. You look good. If you're feeling up for it, we should go find Tomcat and tell them about what happened. Oh, fine. They should still be waiting for us at Stardust. Let's not keep them waiting. Oh, by the way, while you were showering, I was able to replant your Crassula Ovata. How oh, nice. Don't forget to talk to it and give it some love. When I try talking to it, it doesn't even notice I'm there. Either way, our next move is Stardust. Alright, we're gonna talk to this plant. Nice. Ah. 
<laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I am. It's just a plant. It doesn't know any better. Oh, there is more adventuring to do. And nothing left to do in this apartment. Um, but before we head out, let us save again. Sure. Good enough. Two. Done. Alright, map. Let's go to Stardust, I suppose. Oh, I could go bug Lexi. Why not? Lexi's not here. Fine. Yeah, let's go bug the hospital. I want to know that contract that I just signed. Oh, fine. You're not going to let me talk with them and extract that contractual information, so... Stardust Club it is. Let's cross the street without looking. Parked car. You tell the car to stay parked. It doesn't respond. Oh, nice. Sweet. Oh, don't try to start a riot. Fine. Nope. Fine. I guess so. Sorry, I don't think we've met before. I'm Gus. Sup, Gus? You have a really cool mom. How's Stardust treating you? Well, I mean, that one cat uh, hybrid thing isn't treating us too well. It's a bit loud here, too. Yeah. I like a more intimate setting myself, but Majid makes sure the place has good energy. This is true. You don't have to let me or him know if you need any help. We try to run a tight ship around here. Good to know. Uh, do you know anything about Hayden Weber? Oh, you're who Majid mentioned before, huh? Yep. Oh, no, sorry. I've met him since he's a regular, but I've been out and about on business. Haven't seen him in weeks. I wish I could help him. Oh, there isn't much to tell, really. I came to Neo SF from Arizona to finally live somewhere more thrilling. That sounds exciting. Majid needed someone good with numbers to handle back of the house sort of stuff. So, here I am. I didn't grow up in big cities like this, and I always loved listening to Majid's stories from the Bay. Everything is just so exciting. Okay, if you say so. Okay, I'm gonna get back to this, but don't feel bad if you need to interrupt me for something. Sure thing. Enjoy the bar. Alright, so... Oh, there's Tomcat. <laughs> Tell them about when I wasn't at the right place at the right time. How goes the search? Oh, just perfect. What does it look like? Like a turtle crawled up your butt, made it all the way up to your map, and started snapping double time? What's with you? Ah, uh, just having some fun. Try not to take it personally. We have been through quite a lot since we last met. I think we're both still recovering. <laughs> Sorry to hear it. You want to tell me about it without spewing more fire? No, not really. It took us too long to get back inside the apartment. We were too late. Yep. Not only was the data cache gone, but my home had been pillaged and destroyed too. Everything was wrecked. Shit. I can't say I saw that one coming. Really? I 
figured that they'd nab anything they needed the first time I hit the place. Huh. <sighs> Any ideas who it could have been? I'm still blaming Turing. The walls had been spray painted with many grotesque human revolution slogans. It is possible that Hayden was targeted by the organization for his work at Parallax. While my development may have been a secret, he is rather well known for his work on virtual intelligence data. Hmm. I don't know. Hayden would not understand the critical differences between myself and a VI. Nor do I think the average human revolution member would care to make the distinction. Okay. It is an effort to throw us off the trail of who's actually done this. Sure. Um... Let's see. We're gonna go check out the protests. Right. Dr. Fairlight was very kind to point us in the direction of the human revolution protest leader. Hopefully we'll be able to get to the bottom of this after interviewing him. Yep. Yannick Fairlight. Huh. Why'd you run into him? Oh, just you know, at the hospital. Oh. Probably. Yes. We made it to the nearby hospital, and Dr. Mm. Fairlight happened to be occupying the same room we were placed in. We had a discussion with him about Hayden's situation, then came here. Well, shit. Things sure are getting more serious than I first thought. No kidding. You'll need to keep a sharp eye out. Being attacked means the bastards know you're looking now. I'm confident in our ability to push on. Good for you. Hmm. Well, I can't say no much about the man. Really? Fairlight always was a bit of a shut-in, even back when he ran System 1, his old company. You know, I'm noticing a theme among these 2064 characters. That's probably just the famous ones, though. He didn't make any more public appearances after the merger between them and Parallax. At least that adds up. Nowadays he shows up in the news once in a blue moon for some charity thing or another. But, ugh, well, it's, it's all just rumor, but I've heard he holds a grudge about it hotter than the Clantons after the Earps. Really? I'd take care to look this particular horse in the mouth real close if I was you. Hmm. Yeah. Really? While y'all were chasing your tails, I managed to find a way into the Parallax network. Oh, nice. Once I'm in, I should be able to dig out Hayden's personal info file easily enough, including anything related to him on all security clearance levels. Spiffy. If Parallax is anything on Hayden's situation, it'll be in there. Wait, didn't you get arrested forever ago for the same thing you're doing right now? <laughs> you don't say. Parallax actually has considerably better net security than the last time we Yep. I'm gonna need physical access. Okay. I've got a good idea where a note for us to slice into is, but it ain't exactly in a nice part of town. Sure. In fact, police have basically wrote it off as a lost cause. Oh. Not enough well, profit in it. That's good. I know Jess has some contacts in that area. <laughs> She's that girl that chewed you a new rear when y'all first came here. Yeah, I'm sure she'd be delighted yeah, to see me again. Still, but she might be able to help y'all get in and out of that part of the city without ending up in a part skin at an organ shop shop. I don't know. Hmm. Um... That's the spirit. <laughs> Sure. Why and not? I'll get lucky and find that data cache too. But I, I ain't gonna count on it. Um. 
Okay. Jess is still hanging around here at Stardust, but I saw her head over to the VIP room. Cool. It's hybrid night, and she's a popular gal. <laughs> Just please remember to play nice, or her friends will bump you something fierce. Uh. I'll send Jess a message letting her know that y'all are looking for some assistance, and we'll see what happens. Sounds like a plan. Sure thing, honey. I've got to head on out of here and get started on setting up a run. Okay. Just have turn. Let me know when y'all are ready. Sure thing. Oh, I see Jess over there behind some ropes. Nice. Let's go over and say hi to her. Let's not. I mean, okay, fine. Hell no. Look, I'm really trying to have a good time today, and the Human Revolution crud muffins have made that very hard for me. And your interrogation this morning took a bad day to worse. Oh, that was just this morning? Wow. I asked around about you, Juno, and I don't have anything to say to you. The last thing I need is you prodding at me without telling me your press. Really? Besides, the VIP section is only for hybrids and friends on hybrid night. And no way am I vouching for you. Fair enough. Hey, bouncer! We got a capital A asshole over here. Really? Let's go. Was that necessary? Also, who's the jerk now? You or me? No, rude. She didn't even give us a chance to explain ourselves. We have to get back in there and try to be reasonable. Sure. Surely she will see the importance of our task once we've explained everything. Yeah, of course. But that bouncer probably won't let us back in. Perhaps we should try befriending someone nearby and convince them to vouch for us? Uh, if you say so, sure. It's a statistical long shot, but the worst case scenario shouldn't leave an excessive amount of physical damage. If you say so. The Rod of Asclepius gives you life, the Dagger of Power gives your Zapper some extra charge, and the Eye of the Sun blasts away- oh! Oh. The Morning Sun vanquishes the horrible old knight. Well, that's fancy. Fine. Alright, who shall we befriend? Focused patron. Give me a few minutes. No. Sorry, but I'm pretty rapid. Nope. Uh hi. Hi. Give me a few minutes, okay? Nope. Don't bug people, please. Fine. Sorry, cutie. Not quite ready to play the room yet. Gotta try to get another drink into me first. Something really spicy. Okay, fine. Let's see, what would we consider spicy? Hey, good to see you. I'd like a drink, please. What are you having? We're gonna have, oh, the Hassie Spike. So many drinks these days. Drinktionary, the open alcoholopedia says. Oh, I got this, sweetie. Uh, Wait, I. Uh, uh. <laughs> Sometimes I think I'm just holding up the bar rather than running it. No, I just memorized all the drinks. You're better with the customers. There you go. This one is. Soju. Serve hot. See, that doesn't sound very spicy to me. Uh, why mess with the rest when... You... Yeah, as good as that sounds, um... I'm looking for a spicy drink. What? For our good friend over... We didn't even say his name. Um, let's see. Whiskey? Gut punch. That's probably so good. Many drinks these days. Drinktionary, the open alcoholopedia says. Oh, I got this, sweetie. This one is. 
five Bronson Extract and one Flanergide with uh, optional Carbitrine. All aged and mixed. Sure. Bitter, sour, and spicy. Thanks, honey bear. Um, did I cure Turing's product placement? Um, I'm not so there sure about go. that. But, uh, he gets interrupted now when he's trying to uh, talk about the drink shenari, so I guess there's that. Um, use item. Here's a gut punch. Well, look who has good taste. Yeah. I'm Sylvan. What's a wet drink like yourself doing here? Oh, just getting drunk, you know. Whatever I feel like. Well, thanks for the drink. The club is a little dead tonight, so it's nice to see a new face. You know anyone here? Um, just Tomcat. Tomcat? That flashy computer kid? They're always here with a group of other geeks. Huh. Not really my type. Too busy looking at their toys to see anyone around them. Cute outfits, though. You meeting them here? No, 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 no. We're actually trying to... Wait. Uh, yeah, why do you care if they aren't your type? Touché, my dear. Touché. No need for claws, though. I do like Tomcat. Okay. I just can't keep up with their conversations. I have a head for other things. If you examine the Hasty machine in the hospital, you can allow Turing to get rid of their programmed affinity for Hasty. Oh, wow. Huh. Well, what do you do? I'm a fortune teller and astrologist. I spend most of my day reading poems, tarot cards, and bad magazines. What's the difference between the fortune teller and the astrologist? It's not glamorous, but when the drunk patrons come in, you tend to make your rent in only a couple sessions. That's true. I also see people over the mesh all the time. Sure. Isn't that a little seedy? I don't see why. It's not like I scam people or try to convince them of some dark future. Oh. It's more like there's this language made of symbolism and myths, and I'm fluent in it. Okay. You know, you just I keep... just translate what the symbols mean to each person. They read into it whatever they want. Huh. That's an interesting way of looking at it. Does the human revolution really believe that ears and tails will bring the doom of all humanity? Yes. The answer is, not in the sense you probably mean. <laughs> That's true. Through study and practice, I feel closer to my community. And some of the hybrids have a reverence associated with the rituals. At least, when it's just us. The rituals I do for others, it's like the trial version. The stuff we show newbies to see if they like it. Huh. Turns out, a lot of folks like getting their palm read. Well, that's true. I won't lie. You've piqued my interest, Tiger. Why don't you come with me to the VIP room and I'll show you around. I'm How? I'm kind of a big deal back there. <laughs> if you say so. Sure, why not? Excellent. I'll lead the way. Didn't I say to beat it? We're guests of Sylvan. They said we could join them. Ugh. All right. But some damn if you can't stand do, Trump. Do, 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 do. I'm having the least stream delay. Oh, that's good then. Really? That's a shame. I'll be here if you change your mind. Okay. Excellent. Sorry for making up the call. I'm still getting used to the whole subterfuge thing you humans do. Oh, wow. I did not expect that one. Well done, Turing. Yeah, I owe Turing a compliment for that one. Take another run at having a 
conversation with Jess. We have a dragon to slay. Onward. Dude, I wanted to hang out with Sylvan. You just ruined my night, Turing. The night turned out to not be a waste after all. Come on, don't leave me hanging for so long. The night turned out to not be a Okay, let's touch Sylvan. I'm serious. Annoying them and intruding on their space will just delay our investigation. Oh, you're such a killjoy. Such a buzzkill. Whatever. Yeah, that'd be cool. And you're back. Uh-huh. Like a bad packet off the mess net, and I'd never have to see you ever again. Oh. Well, I mean, are you really able to see me with your hair in your face like that? So, of course, I just got off the phone with Tomcat, practically begging me to help you out. It doesn't sound like Tomcat's style. You aren't so good at the long term play thing, are you? At least I'm not coughing up hairballs. Oh. Let every hybrid in this club know that you get off on mocking them. Okay. You assholes are all the same. Let's just get one thing straight here. I'm only willing to talk to you because I owe Tom that. I don't owe you shit. Okay. <laughs> so if you want my help, you gotta do something for me. Well, fine. You got a problem with that. Talk. My neighborhood, my health, my rules. Yeah, whatever. You know what makes me charitable? I agree to talk to people like you again to get things done. Hey, you're the one asking for favors here. So watch your tone, ass butt. Or I'll bounce you faster than the net spits out new slang for teenagers. Um, okay. I need you to break up those human revolution protests. The ones at the genus clinic on Market Street. Oh I yeah. This handled with some stealth. Not that I expect you to know what discreet means. <laughs> oh, I'll show you stealth. Either way, just get it done. I got clients in the middle of treatment cycles. And this media circus is making their lives difficult. Okay, well, I can't exactly be a jerk on that account. That means it's making my life difficult. Let the bastards go march somewhere else. Like Washington. Not here. That's a bit of a walk from here, but okay. Um. Hmm. I want to be a jerk, but not that badly. Yeah, we'll be nice for once. I'm just great. I'm peachy. My clients get harassed and beaten on the daily. I don't have the time or money to help them all. And I have jackasses like you bothering me on my one day off. Um. Wait. Okay, I guess that's... You're fine. Oh, you're gonna braid my fur? And we can talk about all our problems and boys we like? Oh, sure. Okay, which boy do you like? What do you freaking do? <laughs> well, fine. Have it your way. You want to know what my deal is? Yeah. You really want me to get sappy? Yes. Skin cancer. Oh. Stage three. My prognosis was so advanced that the doc said my bones were already lost. Oh. Well, that sucks. So I had to do something drastic. Completely restart my biology from scratch. Wait, if your bones were lost, couldn't you just, like, get, I don't know, some sort of robotic metal, sort of? I don't know. I mean, Dr. Fairlight's got some pretty advanced technology, too. He could probably afford more than you can, but couldn't you get some kind of, like, exoskeleton to help support you? Maybe that's too expensive. You ever seen someone with a severe gene splice? From something freaky, like an insect? That's where hypertech began, you know. 
where my therapy started. Hmm. You can't imagine what it's like to have children cry from just looking at you. When people just see you and sprint the other direction. Have you seen my apartment? I'm pretty sure anybody else in that apartment. Anyway. Yeah, no, that's pretty terrible. I had police following me everywhere I went. I lost my apartment. I lost my dignity. That sucks. Eventually, I was lucky enough to qualify for the cute kitty cat cure to override the expression of the chitin. It changed my life. I have my job and purpose because of it. The fur doesn't scare the rest of the world too much to let me exist. Better an otaku's fluffy wet dream than the monster from a horror VR drama from Japan. I guess that's probably true. My mom still can't look at me straight. Not to get even mushier, but as a kid, she would sing me a song as she counted all the freckles on my face. She hasn't let that go. Sorry to hear that. You know how your folks look at you when they figure out you finally had sex or did crash? Just like that. All the time. Oh, now you're sorry. You haven't even heard the worst part yet. The amount of gene therapy I underwent exceeded the limit that the Human Protection Act allows for procreation. So yeah, the government freaking spayed me if it all wasn't hilariously dark enough. Um... Yeah, that's messed up from a whole bunch of different angles. Um. First I'm too ugly to look at. Now I'm too screwed up to breathe. Yeah, that that's really messed up. Saving my own life forfeited my right to be a person. Hmm. The Human Protection Act. Ha! Apparently protecting humans doesn't include me. Only genotypicals could live in this city and truly think they're the ones who need some protection the most. I mean, it is Neo California, so. In any case, I had some clean eggs frozen and we'll whip them out whenever I'm ready. Oh, okay. Except keeping that shit on ice costs. And my insurance decided to just not pay up due to the elective nature of my feline gene therapy. Yeah, no, that's crap. I don't see why you're blaming me for that. So I took those bastards to court and won. And I've been doing the same thing for everybody else ever since. Good. So, there you go. I got cancer, super science fixed me up and left me a freak, and then the government sterilized me so I wouldn't go out and make more little monsters. And everyone else gets to be the winner by default. Wow. You seem... I don't know. I mean, as terrible as that is, I mean... You found a place where you can sort of kind of be happy. And it's unfortunate that I'm bothering you on your day off, but, you know, um, people might die if I'm not doing what I'm doing, so... Happy now? How's your savior complex doing? This is getting you off? Wow. You really seem like you know how to have a good night. You don't need to insult me, so... Yeah, I am. Now show me that you're on the right side. I'll be watching. Okay. Break up those protests, and then we'll talk. Fine. A deal's a deal. All right, it sounds like we know what we need to do next. Yeah. Let's go to Market Street and break up those protests for Jess. Oh, I, I was going to go play some arcade games, but fine. Yeah, I guess we can do that.
let's save again. Menu. Save. Slot. No, yeah, let's pick slot three. Slot three. Save as three. All right. Back we go. Yeah, actually, so you think you're spoiling the game for me. Um, no, I have seen Game Cola's playthrough, and it does still go up this far. Part of the reason I'm doing such a long playthrough today is because I want to get beyond their playthrough. Um, so I need to go to the map. I need to go to where, yeah, Market Street is. Well, there are the protesters. I have to admit that I still find the vandalism of Hayden's apartment puzzling. Mm -hmm. The protests themselves have been entirely peaceful so far. And the human revolution, regardless of the flimsy philosophical ground they stand on, are not a group known for projecting their ideology through unlawful means. <laughs> Alright. The more I research them, the more I have to admit to the statistical conclusion that we're either dealing with a deceptive covert operation scenario, or less likely, a radical splinter group. Wow. You're coming to a statistical conclusion based on incomplete data. Great. Still, I doubt it will hurt to ask around. Brian Mulberry is there in the center. Fairlight said he was the one to talk to, and my mesh search has confirmed that he is the leader of the local chapter of the Human Revolution Organization. Now... He's a bit player on the national scene, but he seems charismatic and camera conscious from the video clips I've reviewed. Huh. Perhaps we could use that to our advantage? Yeah, perhaps. But I'm more curious than anything. Uh, sure, let's have a chat with them, because why not? Hello there! Hello Would you there! Like to hear about the dangers of our country's unchecked use of genetic modification? Nope. I mean, I okay. Pamphlets. Here, Ooh. take one. Ooh, pamphlets! Nice. <laughs> been so kind to us lately. You don't say. They try to feign neutrality, but just look at the way we get covered. It's disgraceful. If you say so. But no matter. I'll show good faith that you are after what all of us here are after. The truth. Oh. Okay. Fine. We in the human revolution just want people to really think about the technology and bodily enhancements they use every day and decide if they're actually better off. So that's why you put up these big old nasty signs that say STAY PURE. So you can have people think. What questions can I answer for you? Um... Yeah. How do you plan enacting social change? Uh huh. So, like Scientology. The human revolution has faith that American democracy will win out in the end. Oh, well, okay. So at least he believes in democracy. It falls to us to make sure that people are informed about the daunting and confusing technologies they put their senseless faith into every day. That's funny. I didn't see that resemblance until you pointed that out, but yeah, that's interesting. We would like to exhort every individual to try and live more simply, and reject any gadgets or medicine that would make us less than we are. I mean, that's a philosophy, but that's not informing people. Why protest this clinic? Genetic modification is one of the most dangerous sciences we've ever fooled around with. Oh. One of them? What are these others? It's playing God on the highest order, and threatens to unseat what humanity is altogether. Mm, whatever. Cybernetics is a dangerous path as well, 
selling off pieces of ourselves bit by bit for mechanical strength and resilience. But at least a brain-controlled android is still a human brain, even if in a metal box. Hang on. Hang on. So you're saying somebody who does gene splicing is no longer human, but cyborgs are human. Okay. There is a reason Congress enacted laws prohibiting highly modified hybrids from breeding. Oh, tell me more. Now, I do not fault the individuals who come here for treatments, many of whom are disabled and deathly ill. If you ask me, genus isn't the kind of therapy they all need. What? However, we must take a stand against the medical research industry that would have us cast aside our humanity for their miracles. Oh, come on. We hope to educate the public about the dangers of rapid technological advancements. We want to warn the country away from thoughtlessly accepting every scientific discovery we make, before it's too late. Educate. We used to say that splitting the atom would surely bring about the end of humankind. But now we're changing the very things that make us human. Our biology, with nothing to ensure our safety. Safety from what? The revolution we're after is humanity as a whole making the decision to remain as we were created and return to how we lived before genetic science put us on the wrong course. See, this is the honesty I appreciate. This is how you should have answered the question to begin with. None of this educating people. No, be honest about your endeavor. If you're going to be a bigot, own it. This world is Icarus flying too close to the sun. It's only a matter of time before our arrogance becomes our demise. Whose arrogance are we talking about? Just because we can doesn't mean we should. We have reports of a break-in at the home of a parallax researcher with human revolution graffiti at the scene. certainly does not condone such actions at all. Really? We're a peaceful organization, and threatening people is not going to earn us hearts and minds. Okay. But... Off the record... Yeah, you're right. Some of our younger members can be a bit overzealous, as any hot-headed teenager tends to be. What's this off-the-record crap? Also, yeah, you're right, that we have reports is a really nice way to put that. I'll look into this matter personally, and if I discover that any of our younger members were involved, they'll be turned into the proper authorities. Great. Um, how about you not look into this matter personally, but you work with authorities to make sure that people inside your organization didn't do anything like this? This isn't something for you to pursue. This is something for you to have the help out the authorities with pursuing. You're not a policeman. Now, not to cut this too short, but I need to get back to my people. I hope I've answered all your questions. Um, I mean, what are you going to do all day here? You clearly missed doing real journalism. I'm impressed. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So we got to do some real journalism there, guys. I think you're starting to get back into the hard-boiled investigative journalist thing. Yep. Hopefully we'll get lucky enough to turn up a new lead, even if this one didn't pan out like we'd hoped. <laughs> hmm. Fair enough. It's in the Oh, come on. And don't forget, we're still here to actually break up these protests. Let's see if we can <sighs> figure out a solution together. When are they going to develop an artificial intelligence that has a sense of wit and humor? Um, it went a Be little careful. bit further than this. Think carefully. I'm sure we'll find something. I'll let you know once we've gotten to the point where I'm on my own. Um... 
Um, I'm going to attempt to do something that was not part of that playthrough. Off-color brick stuck in the wall. Loose brick wobbles as you palm the wall. Do you think it would be okay to take that? Oh, of course. It's just loose, so sure, why not? It's thick and heavy, but if you carry it around, maybe you find a use for it. Um, but yeah, before we go too far with that, um, let's get some Hassie. Um, yeah, no, I want, I want the AI to have a sense of humor, though. Also, can I say, this reminds me of, um, I forget who, but somebody from, um, Avatar. Um, was it Korra? Was that her name? What kind of model is it? Where did you get it? It's so moe! Oh yeah, it is. It's the mouthy kind. Chatty. Yep. You could always get a different personality profile for him, but it'll probably cost you a few hundred credits. Oh. Anyway, what can I get you? I mean, a few hundred credits to change his personality might be worth it. A drink I can do, and I guess I have some time to talk. The protesters outside the clinic are driving off a lot of my regular customers. Dang. I want to know what kind of hassies you got. Um, yeah, actually tell me your name. Oh, I never introduced myself, did I? No, I'm you didn't. Ramona. Ramona. I guess there isn't much to tell. Oh, okay, next question. I went to college, got a degree, took out a loan and bought this place. Now I spend my days trying to find enough time and money to sustain my VR drama addiction. Next question. <clears throat> my priorities are justice, cute stuff, and magical girls. Next in that order. question. Next question. What else? I pretty much don't leave the store. Next question. Oh, okay. Apparently this is my next question. Although you already told me that you're not too pleased about it. Look, they've got the right to protest, but I don't have to like it. Once they're done with the hybrids, I know they'll be coming for me next. Oh, what's your issue? Just because you like the mesh? So I'll be voting appropriately. And if I have to unclog one more toilet because of an entitled bigoted jerk face, I will lose my goddamn mind! What if they're a customer? Oh, you can't tell? I've got a cybernetic arm and leg, thanks to an auto path crash when I was a kid. Oh. I also got neural links for VR interface. Haha, <laughs> neural links. Uh, I think that falls under elective. If it was up to those dinosaurs, I'd be stuck in a wheelchair right now. Or worse, depending on how far back they want to push our medical technology. It's already illegal for me to have a rocket powered fist. What more do they want? <sighs> Sounds like somebody spends too much time on the mesh. Actually, this voice reminds me of uh, Jesse from um, uh, the Four Kids. Not Four Kids. I was gonna say One Kids, but that's a person. But from like Pokemon Abridged, uh, Jesse has a very similar voice. I just mean he's really cute and lovable, and you kind of want to hug him forever, you know? Or at least a uh, similar articulation. A lot of otaku come around here, probably because I own the place. 
being able to shoot my mouth off, then not explain all the jargon. Uh huh. Yeah, I know it's a bit out of fashion, but I'm a history buff. History buff. The past really gives context to stories of the present. You know what I mean? Is that necessarily part of otaku? I actually don't know. I've been to Tokyo twice already. Twice? No way. The old otaku resists the new culture of the Saishi in the same way their parents refused to give up cassette tapes. Oh, sorry. The Saiba Shibito. Cyber Day. Nice. In the early 21st century, Japan had an epidemic of chronic shut-ins, and the rise of direct link virtual reality only made that worse. Suddenly, people weren't just refusing to leave their rooms, they were refusing to leave their heads! So how early 21st century are we talking about? When are we going to get this stuff? But as the technology got better, the Saishi were the first to figure out how to use their own brains to sculpt cyberspace. Okay. Computers are good at thinking in straight lines, but the human brain is capable of so much more. You know, Turing says the same thing. I just say the human brain is capable of uh, memory recall and parallel processing, both of which computers are good at, too. The best virtual landscapes, the most real VR dramas and games, are created by the side sheet. Well, that's because they have soul. Now, even if an earthquake or a meteor or whatever leveled Japan, they still have Neo Tokyo built on the VR net. Sure. But enough babbling. If you're interested, I'm sure you can find more out on the mesh, or use an induction helmet to visit Neo Tokyo yourself. Yeah, that sounds fun. It's a trip, especially for new ones. How many times have you been to Neo Tokyo? Okay. Enjoy your drink, and let me know if you need anything else. I need a hassie. Hey again. Okay. Enjoy your... Yeah! Hassie Zero. How about a grassy Hassie? A classy Hassie? Okay, we got the Hassie Zero again. Hassie Fire! A Neo Hassie. I'm curious if Hassy Fire refers to something in real life. Maybe a fireball or something. Uh, there's a plant here. Wow. Let's use the pistol on the tree. Do you have any idea how bad an idea that uh, could be? to fire an ionized charge at a plugged-in Christmas tree. That could backfire so badly. Alright. Let's leave the Hassy bar. Um, and again, since I'm starting to getting close to venture into territory I'm not so familiar with, Let's save a little more cautiously. Alright, so what I hear is that you can put this brick to good use. Um, I'm trying to figure out how. Uh... Uh, so be it. Yeah, what if I can use the crowd of protesters? We shouldn't go too deep into the crowd, but let's talk to more visible folks. I mean, they wouldn't give you this brick and no ability to use it. Are you sure about doing that? 
Yes. Oh yeah, no, I know that. Just make sure to only hit the boss so you don't hurt somebody else. Very well. Ready? Go for it. Toss it. Show these police bots who's boss. In fairness. Inelegant, but I have to admire the brutish efficiency. Oh yeah. No, I know it causes a bit of a ruckus, but in fairness, like this group, all they're ever gonna do is cause trouble. It's not a very well motivated, peaceful group, like they want to pretend it is. Um well, so, I still have doubts about the moral superiority of using subterfuge to incite a riot. I have to prioritize Hayden's safety over their right to protest. Of course. It's that simple. I have a feeling Jess won't be pleased, though. Uh, of course not. Never seems pleased. Nope. Hmm. Might I draw your attention to those youths over yonder? Counterculture clothing obvious bad attitudes, and graffiti paraphernalia. Oh, sweet. Those could be our suspects who damaged my home in the name of revolution. Could be. Really? You deduced all that on your own. I'm just making an observation. I see one of them is wearing a new set of Bang B-Stroke 129 headphones. B-Stroke. Yeah. In English, we say B-129. Perhaps you can do some research for a review? Really? Oh no, they've noticed our attentions. Come along, maybe we can catch them. Really? Yeah, that didn't quite work. Never catch them on foot. Hold on, I'm calling for an auto cab of our own. Nice. I know it seems a great deal of trouble for such a tenuous lead, but I have a hunch about them. I don't trust you, man. Flee when no man pursueth. Uh, the auto cab is estimated to take five minutes to arrive. <sighs> you really didn't think this through, Turi. You will never be able to engage in pursuit fast enough to catch up to them. Yeah. Perhaps we should call Tomcat. Maybe they can do some bit of techno wizardry and stop that cab. You know, perhaps they'd be alerted that there's a speeding cab right in the middle of a downtown area, which is highly populated, and it's dangerous for there to be a speeding cab there. It's better than doing nothing. Your confidence is astounding. Well, thank you. <sighs> Hold while I connect us. So, and fair, yeah. This is, like, where I'm starting the game, having no idea what's going to happen next. Howdy, folks. How's the search for the data cache going? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> that's what we're calling about, Tomcat. We may have located the perpetrators, but they eluded us and are making their escape in an auto cab. We attempted to use a cab of our own to tail them, but it hasn't arrived, and they're getting away. You don't say. Can you hack the cab and stop it? You would think, like, this whole conversation would have taken place even before I authorized it. Um, that Turing would be doing this in parallel to us chasing those two. No can do, little guy. Yeah. The on those cabs is tight, and the dang thing will shut down its external net connection long before I get in. Oh. Well, that's cool. What? How does that make any sense? All right. I went faster than spin on skill. Yeah, I did a job a few years back and had to break into the city central traffic network. Do me a favor and don't ask why. <laughs> the back door I drilled into that long ago is still wide open. I'm walking into the traffic 
management system now. Wait. Oh, shit. They may not have fixed that back door, but they did install a new counter intrusion VI. Well, yeah. Oh, the damn thing is hot on my tail. Sucks for you. Nice. Hold tight. I'm gonna be doing some two sets of hands on one keyboard kind of hacking. Really? Just push on the map and load it up on Turin's face. Sorry, Turin. They're on the move. Here's how it works. Use your display map to keep track of their CAD and redirect it back to you. You can trigger traffic nodes at intersections so the cab thinks the streets are blocked off. Do it right, and you should be able to steer them right back to you. Fair enough. You just gotta make sure to stop them where you're at, or else they'll just go running off on foot. I'll put a goal marker on the map for you. Yeah, I see the goal marker. You can trigger any node on the map at any time, so plan ahead. Yep, that's cool. I'd say you'll have time for two moves every time they hit an intersection. If they go off the map, though, go lose them. Oh, this is like playing a game of Go. Block every road that leads out of our grid, and watch the places with three exits you can't all cover in one go around. Yeah, no, I get it, I get it. This is really simple, if Just it's turn-based. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep this VI from messing on the carpet, and once I tell the connection, this little trick is over. If it's if this is turn-based, it's trivial. I'm into the cat control note they're currently arriving at. It's like a game ago, but way easier. Right. I'll mark the southern exit as closed first. Good. Good, good, good. We only have time to block off two routes before the auto cab will make a decision and move. Right. We shouldn't block the route back here. We have to stop them where we can catch them. Oh, that's what's gonna make this challenging. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I get it, I get it. Once you get them back here, press the big button on top of the map to shortwire the auto cab. Okay. Be careful. If you stop their ride anywhere else, they'll just run off. Well, yeah. What do you think our next move should be? Um, next move should be... Well, okay. Oh, I have to choose on this intersection. Okay, that makes it a little bit more difficult. Um... I... Uh, so... Yeah, no, I think this would be simple if I just say don't let them go east. I suppose it doesn't matter, though. Yeah, let's block the north move. Turn, I can't have you talking. It's messing with the signal. It's up to you now. Okay, that's cool. Don't let those punks escape, and don't trap them anywhere that's not here. Right. We can access any of the control nodes in the area at any time. Plan ahead, and we should be able to get them. Fair enough. I gotta be careful. Oh, I can only do two on any on the same note at once. Can I... Oh, I can do any two nodes anywhere. Um, so let's hit that one. Okay. So I want to start hitting this node. Yeah, hit this exit. And... Yeah, that exit too.
Um, and uh, I'm not sure if this is going to fail me. Uh, I should have made this a lot easier. Oh, it is going to come back. Oh, good. So we hit that, and this. And now we want to start blocking off this exit. And that exit. Really? Am I running out of turns or something? The, there was a far more efficient way for me to have done this. There we go. I'm gonna go stop them, and then we can interrogate the miscreants. That wasn't so hard. What the hell do you want? Dude, what's your problem? Who do you think you're messing with, huh? Worst taxi ride ever. <laughs> it's gotta be a super expensive taxi ride, too. You ain't got nothing on us, and if you don't get out of my way, I'll mess you up. Um, nice to meet you, too. Hey, what do you think we should do? We haven't observed them doing anything illegal, and we could potentially make this go over smoothly. What? Or, we could share news of this encounter with Lexi before things get out of hand. Uh... These two seem agitated already, and it may be best to make sure they're handled by the appropriate authorities. Oi. Um It's up to you. How do you want to do this? Well, crap. Yeah, would I rather interrogate them myself or They haven't done anything wrong, so the cops can't do shit. <laughs> really? I mean, you didn't do anything wrong, right? Seriously. Um, right. We ain't got nothing to hide. I mean, they still have a right to be totally pissed over that taxi ride I gave them, but um um Oh, cool. That's pretty cool. These are the tools of our trade. These are all above board and legal. Nice. We just got done making a piece for a client. Oh, really? That's right. We're artists. Okay. What's in the bag? You a cop? No. Because if you ain't, we ain't got nothing in the bag. Huh. Why did you run? Running? Who was I running from? You calling me a coward? Uh, I don't think that's what they were insinuating. I'm curious who did the voice acting acting for Nervous Punk. Er, right. We just got places to get to, and gotta go fast. You're holding us up. Enough! Stop assuming you can misdirect us with blustery words and feign ignorance. Really, Turing? Really, Turing? You're pulling a move that I would pull. I've been a bad influence on Turing. What can I say? I've matched the hues of those paints and the patterns at the bottom of your shoes with 95% accuracy 
to the scene of Hayden Weber's apartment. Now tell us what you were doing there and why you stole Hayden's data cache. Now you're accusing us of stealing? Why I oughta... Jeff, I think they're on to us. Maybe we just answer their questions so they don't go to the cops? There we go. Damn it, Oliver. I told you I'm Starfucker now. Wow. That, that's quite the name. I only went along with this because you said we would go to a movie afterwards. <sighs> I don't even care about this human revolution stuff. Wow. Just because you're dad. Don't talk about my dad. What? He gets this name? I thought he was just going to be Chad. According to IMDb, Oliver is voiced by Eric Scott Kimmerer. Huh. That's cool. <sighs> Why'd you take the data cache? Actually, yeah. Kidnapped? He's been kidnapped? Yeah, he's been kidnapped. Shit, we ain't got nothing to do with that. We just sliced the door controls and trashed the place. Wasn't nobody there? Fair enough. Hey, 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 hey. Be quiet, Chad. I don't want to go to Juvie. Here, you can have it. There we go. There we go. Okay, well, thanks for giving it back. See? I don't want to interrogate these guys, because they actually, um, as much of a jerk as, as, as Chad has been, you know... Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Just get out of my way. We hope you find that Hayden guy. And we're real sorry. We weren't trying to hurt anyone. Yeah. Alright. Let's go catch that movie. Great. Can we get dinner first? Wow. Such a personality sure. dynamic. Whatever you want. He doesn't even go back to being Chad here. Incoming call from Tomcat. Hi, folks. Jess just called and told me she has a clear way to the access node. Oh, nice. She'll get you inside, and I'll walk you through connecting me so I can access the Parallax network. That should help our hunt. All right. Did you get the data cache? Yep. Yes, those punks happen to have it. Oh, great. We don't have time to worry about it right now, though. So... Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I totally respect that. That's really cool that um, he doesn't go back to being Chad. But I'm just making an observation in the form of a complaint because I can. Um... It's really cool how open-ended this game is about some of those things. Um, just how you often have at least two solutions to a given problem. Go to Stardust and drop it off with the chief for me, okay? He'll hold it to pass on to me once I get there. Okay, fine. I'll to trigger an alert within Parallax's network security, and they're going to be moving their logs from one secure server to another. Uh... How does that help us? Okay. No problem, Tomcat. We'll make our way there directly after we return to Stardust. I mean, moving log files is like the least exciting thing you could do with log files. You must have some really seriously paranoid... I don't know what. Also, in theory, log files should be replicated across servers, so... Both sites should be secure, and there should be no need to transfer the log files. Let's go. Our mission for Jess is done. Bricks are just useful objects in general. I guess that's probably true. Alright, so let's go to our map. Uh, go back to Stardust. Carefully cross the street. Welcome to Stardust. 
there's Majid. We should leave this data cache to him first, like Tomcat asked. Yep. Here you go. All right. Tomcat asked me to take that off your hands and pass it on to them later. Thanks for getting it to me. Nice. I won't pester you about what it is. Oh, okay. I know things are always very hush-hush with Tomcat. This is true. I'll make sure they get it later today. Nice. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> it comes off as pretty threatening. Yeah, I don't know. Alright, where do we want to go next? Do we still have that brick in our inventory? We do not. Bummer. Alright, let's go... I don't know where. We can go to the hospital again. Uh, we can go to the police station, because why not? So, NSFPD, how is it hanging? Actually, that makes sense, if I want to reach out to Lexi. Nice. Sup, Lexi. Hey again. What can I do for the two of you? Oh, nothing. You know anything else on my plate in a major city full of crime in the middle of a culture war? Um... How's the investigation going? Huh. Not going much of anywhere. I can't even start an official investigation, so my options are limited here. Fair enough. I've been reviewing traffic cam footage for hours, just trying to get a glimpse of whoever assaulted Hayden. Jeez. My superiors aren't out and out grounding me, so there's that. They still aren't giving me any more resources to work with. That's a sh that that's a bummer. No manpower, no special tech support, nada. Wow. I'm assuming it's their way of abusing the corporate overlords without actually being a bunch of corrupt pigs. But hey, I like a challenge. Just me in the streets is what I'm used to anyway. Plus, now I have you two. Yeah. We are happy to assist in any way possible, Detective Rivers. We are only at your command. How about you try not to get shot at, for starters? Your track record isn't great on that one so far. <laughs> right. Uh, do you need anything? Mostly, I just need a break in the case. Or a way to even start it. Something I can use instead of the fly-by-night spy crap you're probably digging up. But, screw it. You might as well work it from both angles. Fair enough. Ha! <laughs> Okay. I berate you for wasting my time, but frankly, I needed a break anyway. This is true. Other than being overworked and underpaid, I'm doing just fine. Hey, you said you came here for better salary, but yeah, I guess you're saying you're just way overworked for that well, salary. We just hung out, so what do you want to know? Um. Have you been seeing anyone since my sister? Mm, nah, not really. I'm real busy, you know, running around chasing bad guys. Yeah, see, it's all a matter of perspective. The detective doesn't always get the girl in real life, you know? I don't know. Does the detective always get the girl in real life? I'd rather focus on my work. Do you ever talk to your sister, by the way? Um, not really. Yeah, it's easy to drift apart, huh? Ah, oh, hell. It was a lot of reasons. I don't know if you remember that incident back home, the hybrid ex-marine that was murdering people. Uh, I can't say I do. Well, I couldn't tell you back then, but that was my case. Oh. Personal. Wow. Wow. The chief had my back, but I felt I burned too many bridges. It's a small city, and once the rumor mill got going. That sucks. Well, I was afraid I 
I'd either be made out to be a hero or a villain, and I didn't really want to be either. Well, that's good. Never mind the fact that people already didn't like me too much because of my implants. Some people really buy into that eyes are the window to the soul thing. Oh. So I figured I'd move to the big city, where the big crimes are, right? Lose myself in the hustle and bustle. Sounds fun. Turns out I'm still a bit too much of a cowboy for the NSFPD, but I don't regret the move. Well, that's good. Most of the time. Well, thanks for keeping tabs on me. We'll have to sit down for coffee after this is all over. Dude, that coffee. I want hassy. You be sure to come back if you find something I can use. Okay, Detective Rivers. How about... A brochure for the human revolution. Oh, please. Don't tell me I have to worry about you falling into that crap, too. <laughs> uh, how about a business card? If I ever need corporate technology consultation, I'll ask you about it. Okay. How about the pistol? Back off, detective. I have marksman status at the range. Wow. Um, how about the headphones? Huh. I didn't think anyone actually bought this brand. Shows that you know. Every single time I dare put a bit of faith in you. Let's not bother her while she's working. Fair enough. Alright. Back to the map. <sighs> Stardust Club. Seems to be a viable goal. Um, yeah, let's go there, because there's an exclamation point on the map. Um, so, I don't know, let's go look at the door. Let's go enter. Um, it's not even a spinny chair. Wow, that's lame. How about focused patron? Is he still focused? Sorry, but I'm pretty wrapped up in something important. Are you? Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, what would you want to drink? A bit sweet, huh? Let's see, can I figure this one out? Hey, good to see Let's get a drink. What are you having? Oh, I saw this in the playthrough, never mind. Figuring this one out should be simple. Um something sweet. Tastes like orange. So many drinks these days. Drinkionary, the open alcoholopedia says. Oh, I got this, sweetie. There we go. This one is two parts champagne, one part orange flavored vodka. You know, orange soda, orange everything. Ever thought just what orange tastes like? It's this. This drink is what orange tastes like. That's how you describe it. Rawr. Thank you, hon. Yeah, that sounds sweet enough. Sure. Here you go. Tastes like orange. Here, can I give you tastes like orange? Oh, just call me psychic. Just psychic, you know. I'm Caitlin. Yeah. I'm usually a lot more sociable. Things have just been rough today. Everyone has a bad day on days. My brother's going through gene therapy. Ouch. He's going at least twice a week for health and maintenance. 
Damn. There are human revolution processors outside the clinic, making it even harder for him. They're always outside, harassing anyone coming in. It's exhausting. Oh, I'm sure. Um... Oh, are you a journalist or something? That's really interesting. Oh, you think that's interesting? That group? They want to drag us all back to the Dark Ages, regardless of who it hurts. Sorry, I don't want to rant about it. So, yeah, you do. what's your article about? <laughs> Mostly dragging us back to the Dark Ages. Oh, this would be mean. This would be so mean, and I'm so curious where it goes. Dang, so close. <laughs> what? Well, I think I've had enough noise and socializing for tonight. Okay. Thanks for the drink and the conversation, but... I think I'm gonna head out. Have a good night. Yep, you too, Caitlin. Alright, focus patron. Do you have anything to say? Uh, hi. Hi. Give me a few minutes, okay? Uh. That's not how to draw a tattoo. No, seriously. Don't bug people, please. You'll get us in trouble. The more he does this, the more I'm curious about who he is. Dancers on the floor. Dancers on the floor. Oh, wow. I can make a loading screen out of this. Just for my stream in general. That'd be cool. That was fun. Let's do it again. We really should stay focused on our goals, but I suppose I shouldn't rain on every parade. Go have fun. Yeah. No, 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 no. Always push the game to its limits. Okay, apparently those are the limits of the game. Party never stops. Can I get this focused patron to join the party? Uh, hi. Hi. All right, let's cause some trouble, guys. Oh, right, we need to talk with Jess. But first... I'm ashamed to say I've gone on a few assy spike benders in my time. You think? Yep. Yeah. Well, that's it. I love vintage game experiences. Have you ever heard of Overblood? Nope. Have you ever heard of Undertale? I think is a cool name, Dog's Bower. I can see why everybody in this section avoids you. Come on, don't leave me hanging for so long. The night turned out to not be a waste after all. That's true. That's dancing. All right, onward with the plot. Hey, I heard from my friends down the street that the protesters are gone. Must have been you, huh? Yep. All right then, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt and return the favor. Nice. Tomcat said that if you got to an old abandoned access node, you might be able to find out what happened to Hayden. Yep. Oh, that's it? I called up a buddy who's on night shift for Parallax tonight. He can buzz you in. But if anything happens, you broke in. 
Okay. So it's about even. Don't think about drawing any more debits for a while. Huh. <laughs> Good luck. Keep me out of your shit. Wow. You don't even want to keep talking. Good luck. Keep me out of your shit. I guess that's that. Or knock on plastic. Or is it metal? See, that's what I was trying to ascertain by clicking on the table. Um. <laughs> yeah, either that or she just really doesn't care anymore. And I can't blame her. Focused patron, how's it hanging? Give me a few minutes, okay? Um. Okay, I'll be back in like a day or two. menu. Here we go. Save. And sure, why not? Save slot four. Done. Alright. Back we go. Ever onward. Dog patch. Oh, did I guess? Huh. This is the place Tomcat said we should head to. Yeah, I guess we're not in Chapter 3 just yet. Unassuming and quiet. I'll be honest. I don't think I would be in this section of the city without Jess giving us the all clear. It's really surprising how quiet this section of the game is. It's plasteel. Oh, of course it is. Crime statistics are quite alarming, so let us get done with our errand here and move on to safer ground. Nah. You really think anywhere in the city's safe? Um. Yeah, don't worry about getting mugged. I mean, worst case, we end up losing this carton of milk. I can't help it. Uh, yeah, you can. Stealing a ROM is considered petty theft, and I'd really rather not be taken by some miscreants out to pawn me for a minor amount of credits. <sighs> Just think of the adventures you'd enjoy. Our hypothetical kidnapper wouldn't even be punished worse than a slap on the wrist if it were a first offense. You're looking at the negative aspects of this quite a lot. Just think of the fun journeys you could have being pawned off. I shouldn't get too worked up about the legal system not accounting for machine sapiens. I am the first. Yeah, also, you're a machine. You like to argue that you're sapient. I still don't buy it. That I know of, anyway. Um. Let's touch the fan. It needs no service. Okay, let's look at it. Gotta keep the generator cool, or it'll break. Street art. Door to access node. This is the door to the access node that Tomcat told us about. We need to use the buzzer to get inside. Okay. Um... Seems like he's having some good fun there. Kids. Kids. 
Uh, sure, why not? That's right. Good. Be quick. Don't touch anything. Got it? This conversation never happened. And you're on your own if you get caught up there. Got it. I hope you find what you're looking for. This is it. Let's go inside and I'll call Tomcat. All right. This place doesn't look like it's had any maintenance in years. Oh, cool. I hope the systems are still functional. Oh, of course they are. Oh, I forgot you can't see in darkness. Maybe that switch over there adjusts the lighting. Maybe it'll activate some kind of death trap. Let's look at the light switch. Looks like a light switch. Let's use the light switch. Yeah. See, it says okay up there. Everything's a okay. Perfect. Oh, Tomcat is pinging us. Forwarding video and audio. Howdy. Y'all like the access node? You know, if we're forwarding video and audio, you think Tomcat would be able to figure out that we're at the access node? I'm set to slice in once turn makes physical access. Okay. Of course, Tomcat. Just walk me through how to connect myself, and I'll give you the necessary system permissions to use me as an interface. There we go. Simple. Just patch yourself into the Lynx terminal down there, and I should be able to get started. The <laughs> Lynx. Ah, uh, the cat puns. Um, Lynx is also a web browser, for what it's worth. Connecting wirelessly to it now. Wait, you're connecting wirelessly? Why would you need a wireless connection that for which you have to you require physical access? Okay, you seriously messed something up in the lab because there are a few questions that. Oh, that's too bad. Permissions granted. Permissions granted. Here you go, Tomcat. Please be careful in there. Don't worry, though. I'm an old hand at this. You won't notice a thing. There you go. One sec. Oh, shoot. Y'all will have a bit more to do before I can get the info we need. Yeah, I figured as this much. This system's still running on old cassettes, and the recall slot is empty. Can't call up Hayden's info file without it. Can't call up Hayden's info file. There should be a cassette on the opposite side of the wall we can overwrite with the recall program. Oh, okay. Pretty sure all that one was used for was phone monitoring. You know, from back when phone networks were separate from data networks? Ha. Uh, uh. <laughs> I swear, y'all, I just turned 22. What? Anyways, we need to move that cassette across the room to access the records. Okay. Figure out how to do that and hit me back up when you've done it. Okie dokie. Uh, there's a cassette row, a Lynx terminal, a cassette row, and a utility arm. Oh! Okay, no checklist. Light switch, warning label. High voltage. Okay. Tangled wires. Alright, we'll have to use the Lynx terminal. Welcome to Lynx. Um. Operate transfer arm. Um. Close manipulator. Open manipulator, retract arm, turn arm, move arm left, extend arm, wait, uh, turn arm, Move 
arm right. Extend arm. Nice job. That wasn't so hard. I'm gonna put some more pressure on them to move the data now, and we'll see if we can't slurp it right out of this network trunk. Okay, cool. You would have thought that someone would have noticed and decommissioned this access node when the neighborhood went to hell, but... Eh, who wants to do that, though? This mouse is happy to play while the cat is away. <sighs> Why would they... Yeah. Why is this place usable for us, anyway? Way back when I was a youngin', when I first hacked into Parallax's network, I mostly did it to make a point, yeah? Okay. I was just about to launch the mesh tech system, and I wanted to show the whole darn world that their security had more holes in it than Swiss cheese. Sure. Yeah, of course, I wasn't too shy about poking in a few more holes of my own devising while I was there. After putting in some more tricky software backdoors, I went ahead and deleted this access node off the maintenance schedule. Ah. Then I reassigned the guy who was supposed to keep an eye on it to a different location. Very good. They were in the process of buying up a whole gaggle of these nodes in preparation to set up a private network for themselves. All just to use for the mesh net launch. Maybe a little too confident of them. Sure. Most of the software holes have been patched out as they've upgraded their network, but this whole place is just as forgotten as I left it. That makes sense. I've been targeting one of their data centers with a botnet-driven DDoS attack, hitting every port into its network that I can find. Um, I'm gonna trust that somehow that makes sense. Like, I know what a botnet-driven DDoS attack is, I know what it means to hit all the ports. Um, I just, you don't have a data center that's public facing like that, unless you've terribly effed up your network topology, but okay. Ain't likely to do much, but toss in a few attempts to crack the firewall and their VIs are shit and bricks. <laughs> it's standard procedure for them to move their sensitive data to a different data center in case the attacker actually gets in. Um. <laughs> okay. So, it's funny how I say, like, now this is just too much. Like, everything else in this game, um, in terms of gene splicing and, um, cyborgs and cybernetics and all that stuff I'm buying in is something that might be real. But this... The fact that I would question this, but not question the rest of everything, uh, just makes me wonder, like, I don't know. I'm willing to buy into some things more easily than others, but this in particular just strikes me as something just completely outlandish and crazy. But, okay. Make enough noise and it'll scare them enough into taking some defensive action, which is where we want them. Sure. Why not? Well, no shit. Now you'll just hold tight. I'll be done with this lickety split. Yeah. Holding tight's not gonna work. Something's gonna happen. Surveillance camera footage. Oh god. Yep. Yep. What is it, Tomcat? What did you find? We're dead. He's... He's gone, Turn. What? Of course he's gone, Tomcat. That's why we're here. <sighs> Shit. I, I mean... He's gone, gone, Turn. Hayden is... Hayden is dead. Sure. 
this really doesn't seem like the time. Regardless how terrible the news is. Parallax. Had security cam footage from the hallway outside Hayden's apartment encrypted on their network. Just a short clip. It looks like Hayden started to struggle with a couple of big dudes when they broke through the door and one of them shot him. But is he dead? I also found some chatter about it on some darknet channels. It wasn't a kidnapping. Somebody went there to murder him. I'm so damn sorry. Wow. Thank you for your assistance in this matter, Tomcat. I think I'll walk back to the apartment. Wow. I need some time to run some calculations about this new scenario. If you'll excuse me. Should you follow them? How do I want to respond to this? Um... Yeah, turn will be okay. If you say so. Yeah, I'm gonna keep digging through this data until they kick me out of the system. I'll try to find some kind of lead on why this whole thing started in the first place. All right. Well, thank you, Tomcat. Maybe I can find something out about who killed Hayden and why Parallax has a copy of the footage. It ain't much of a silver lining, but we have the answer on Hayden's fate. Maybe it's time to call it quits. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Wow. Wow. I did not expect that one bit. Um, you never tend to think of computer games um, or storylines taking that kind of turn, I at least not in America. Things usually have a rosy ending. You're back. Uh, yeah, although I would like to save. Okay, well, we'll have this conversation now. Um. Turing. Did you see the Jace plant? Its death is unfortunate, but fitting. Ah. Uh. Yet another thing to be guilty for. Hey, you're proud of the fact that you don't care about the first law, because you need to be able to be independent and self-determining and if now you're self-determining you get to choose um, just how guilty you feel about that will, will you keep helping me? I need you uh, I'm gonna be polite here um, and not say some of the things that drift through my mind. Bastards who killed my progenitor. I need to finish this. I don't know what I'll do afterwards, but I need to see this through. Like, so many thoughts occur to me about this. On the one hand, 
Yeah, I am so ready to needle him for being so emotional like this. Um, and just really question, um, I don't know, just how much the game glosses over his free will, his determination to, um, to just do what he wants, essentially. And at the same time, he's acting so emotional, he can't really get a control over his emotions. I mean, that's kind of an oxymoron, but it just seems really strange that he has these emotional outbursts, and then sometimes he just gets so lost in calculation. Um, and just loses track of... Um, I don't know, he seems sometimes a lot more human than other times. Um, so. Let's see. My options here. We'll bring them to justice. We'll make them pay. We'll find them. And find the truth. Yeah, it's not about justice. It's not about making them pay. Um... We need to pursue, um, to figure out what happened, because the truth is what's going to help, uh, heal. What does the truth mean anymore? What does it matter? Will finding the truth bring back Hayden? Will it fix the pain they've left me in? You know, some of these questions go better unasked. <laughs> but... I mean, go ahead, ask them. Just don't expect me to provide some deep philosophical answer to a robot. Um, yeah, so... But, I, I guess you're right. Well, yeah, I'm always right. Not always, but pretty often. Knowing the whys and wherefores will bring closure to this. Of course. I yeah, everybody could use closure after what happened. And that's what I was trying to focus on last chapter, at the very end of the chapter, is... Is this really what happened? I mean, we need closure on this, don't we? I think for now we should keep knowledge of Hayden's death between you, Tomcat, and I. Um... I have opinions, I have ideas. Uh, will you expound or shall I? It may give us an edge if the people we seek don't know how much we've already discovered. I'll just take that on its face and not argue with it. I think everything's worth considering. But, um, you know, I'm also willing to just allow the story to play out this way. I'd actually think it'd be interesting if there were two completely different storylines. One based on immediately involving Lexi, uh, and the other based on um, uh, doing as Turing is suggesting. I think that would be fascinating. You likely need sleep, and I need some time to... I need some time. Not gonna argue with you. Not gonna argue with the machine. Wow, what a trip. What a trip. Good morning. I trust you slept well. Really? Like, I don't understand this. Last night, EX so depressed. Now he starts off by saying, Good morning, and I trust you slept well. I just... I don't understand Turing. I think he's beyond understanding. And that's why, I, for the most part, I don't treat him as if he's a human. Um, I don't make any attempt to. Because it's just too difficult. So... 
fine. What's our plan? Now that we are both refreshed, I feel it wouldn't hurt to recap our progress and determine if any changes should be made based on our successes and failures. Let's talk about how things are going so far. Okay. Since your journalistic efforts are a big part of why I originally recruited you, we can start there. Okay. Your inquiring mind has been a huge boost in our journey thus far. Well, yeah. Although, in fairness, and to play devil's advocate here, my mind has not been entirely inquiring, except for that one incident where I was um, interviewing the human revolution. Um, by and large, I've been just an antagonist throughout the entire game, but go on. As a wrong, I can't talk to people as intently as you, so I must say I'm quite grateful for your skills in that regard. You know, at some point, you don't have to keep saying this. You don't have to keep saying, I'm a Rom, I'm a Rom, I'm not a human. Like, leave it to me to bash you for all your idiosyncrasies. You don't need to bash yourself. That's anything but constructive. Yeah, like chucking that brick at the police robot? That's diligence right there. Beyond journalistic persistence, let's take a look at how we performed in other responsibilities. Specifically, our choices in overcoming obstacles. Really? You're gonna judge me on that too? Really? I must say, our first hurdle was handled masterfully by you, and we avoided any further issue. Start. Our first hurdle. On the other hand, while violent approaches may be equally efficient, we should avoid them whenever possible to mitigate any additional risk. Really? Just keep in mind the consequences of a reckless solution. I fear they will only get more severe from here on. Wait, are you saying it's my fault that Hayden's dead? Are you trying to guilt trip me here? I mean, I get that that plant on the windowsill is dead. But other than that, I don't think I've done too badly. Finally, I was quite impressed by your ability to adapt on the fly, as they say, and perform so well when thrust into a sudden situation. <laughs> You're talking about the car chase scene thing. Whatever. Lastly, I'd like to discuss how we're getting along with our companions and allies along the way. It's important. It's important because I say so. <laughs> I just don't get you, Terry. I was very impressed with your negotiation abilities with those kids. We got our data cache, and they went on their way, and hopefully learned a lesson, too. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to see what would happen if I pursued that differently. But, on the other hand, I wanted to, like, actually be a real person in this game. As for Jess, she has already been very helpful. And now that we know she's an attorney, her potential to continue being useful is high. Sure. Things so far haven't been smooth. But if you get a chance to be nice to her, try to take it. Really? I mean, I know I came across as a total jerk at first, and so did she. Um, but no, I like this truce that I have with Jess. Where, um, so we cooperate with each other, we get things done. But... Like, she holds such a grudge against people that it's hard for me to not constantly give her crap about it. I know her situation's awful, um, but at the same time, like, I don't know. Just going around being a total not happy person, and very vocally so. I mean, it's kind of characteristic of what I've been doing throughout this entire playthrough. 
for most of this playthrough. But my cynicism is warranted, damn it, because I have good points. Maybe. Um, yeah. No, I mean, it's one thing to be mouthing off about other characters and not liking them. But if you're at least witty about it, and always having some sort of sting in each remark, then it's entertaining to some degree. But if you're just like, oh, those people suck, then that's something different. Um, so, I don't know. Like, if she's gonna be mean, and, I don't know, not respecting people, of course I'm gonna give her crap. But, yeah. If she can keep things in check, we'll keep this truce that we've got going. Detective Rivers was good to involve as well, and I can tell you enjoy having a familiar face around. Well, you're just saying that because we visited the police station. But, okay, sure, why not? She could prove to be our greatest aid, as long as we make it worth her time. No funny business. <sighs> See, you're all over the spectrum, Turing. You're ecstatic, you're depressed, and now you're just not even there. You're just pure an analytical. Bit of a mystery. Um, aside. Yeah, I agree. Tomcat, we don't entirely know. Tomcat's a pretty complex character. Um, and in part because, like, we don't have as much information as about her and her backstory and everything as we'd like. And, I mean, yeah, part just due to her secretive nature and such. I mean, she seems quite open, but at the same time, she deals with a lot of stuff that we don't know about. So, quirky nature aside, I don't know. Like, it's clear Tomcat is motivated by some things, um, but we don't know uh, her entire story. Try not to let it drain on you. They are skilled, and I don't want them to distrust us. Oh, come on. This is a computer game. Like, you saw that one scene where I just totally ticked off Jess. And now we're friends with Jess. So, I don't trust that this game is going to allow me to, like, kick characters out of the story. That'd be impressive if I could do so, but I don't think, I don't trust the game will allow me to do that. Yep. We're gonna go live in Hayden's apartment now. The road has been bumpy. We're both a bit out of our element, and things are stressful. Yeah. Maybe stop boasting so much about how oh, I'm so smart and I'm so fast and I've got such powerful equipment, and then on the other hand, being so insecure about just being a ROM. Just try being normal. And try being respectful, and I don't know. And try being a little bit more complex, and less, I don't know, whatever you are at the moment. Let's both remember that we are on the same team here, and try to turn things around for better as we continue our search. No. Let's try to make things worse. Yeah, I mean, this is how stories develop, is that there's tension because um, some character protagonist wants something and there's an obstacle in the way. This is the whole hero's journey, in a nutshell. Perhaps Tomcat was able to find something of use in Parallax's network while they were inside. Translation. Tomcat was able to find something of use in Parallax's network while they were inside. Yeah, how about you? Really? Rationing every available resource, and yet spending half of your cycles criticizing my behavior. I'll never understand you, Turing. Never understand you. Perhaps you have some bright ideas? You're a big 
big shot investigative journalist, right? Well, yeah. Idea one would be asking uh, Lexi how things are going. Or Detective Rivers, if you prefer to say it that way. Yeah, I'm sorry. Lexi, I think my name's confused here. Basically, my ideas are talk with all the characters we already talked with and see if they found anything. How about consulting Dr. Fairlight, who said he was going to put some quiet feelers out there and perhaps get more information? How about going to the police station and following up with the police department and see if they found anything? You know, I'm the journalist here. <laughs> this is just off the top of my head, Turing. Could you not have thought of any of this? Oh, that, that's actually cute. I've always had that link there. Nightbot drops in there about how journalism is important these days. And I do believe it's true. Um, journalism is quite important. It gives us a better understanding of the facts and how they apply to um, modern events. And having those real facts and having that context properly applied in a compelling manner and being able to publish articles and have freedom of the press and bring people together to have meaningful discussions is a very important thing these days. That's what journalism is about, in my opinion. I'm not a journalist, but I think um, as so much information spreads so quickly, it becomes important to have the right information in the proper context and then be asking meaningful questions about it and starting a meaningful dialogue. Um, and that's why I have Nightbot repeatedly dropping that command in my stream uh, to remind people that journalism is important. Um, good journalists get paid for their efforts and they make an excellent contribution to society and we need to recognize their efforts and support them. You have an incoming call from Tomcat. Wow, why are you so pissy? Forwarding video and audio. Morning. <laughs> yeah. Could be. That could be happening here. That also that drop of the music really helped me make my point. So how about that? Yeah, no, you said you were forwarding the audio and the video, but uh, Turing's still talking, so I guess he's good at multitasking. Otherwise, we're down to canvassing Hayden's address book and seeing if any of his contacts have an idea about who might have had a desire to target him. <sighs> Turing! Turing, you just asked me if I had any bright ideas. I told you all my bright ideas, and you weren't listening. Turing. But that's just fishing in the dark. Uh, yeah. Safer off at Hayden's apartment than here. Well, I called a fair amount of data from the Parallax service before they managed to kick me out, but it'll take me a while to go through it. Also, um... If Hayden's out of the picture, um, you know, I'm just acting as a journalist here. I don't have the credits to continue living in this apartment. It might be a good idea, uh, especially if there's no active investigation by the police. Just draw a few credits out of Hayden's account so I can live here for another few months. Anyway. I mean, I think that's something probably worth pursuing, Turing. Okay, back to the plot. I pulled a fair amount of data from the Parallax servers before they managed to kick her out, but it'll take her a while to go through it. A lot of it's unrelated. TPS reports, maintenance logs, used to be for other corporations, but about as useful as dirt to us. It'll take me a while to decrypt all of Hayden's files, but maybe we'll find something there. 
Um, I have a, such a logical disconnect here. Because you said that you're going to put a lot of effort into trying to parse through all this data. Then your very next sentence is, it's going to take you a while to decrypt all of Hayden's files. You're not a program. You're a person. A person would start all these programs in the background to encrypt or decrypt files. I know, because I've done this sort of thing to compress or decompress files while making backups and restoring backups. You're able to do this in the background and you don't have to sit there the whole time. And sitting there is just going to make you more anxious. But okay. 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 Someone's been messing with the articles of the news organization named Augmented Eye. Huh. You don't say. It seems like the network security head there is asking around for cybercrackers to help figure out how their reports are getting changed. The original files on their servers are untouched. In their system, everything looks peachy keen. Okay. But when you view the site from the outside of the network, things have changed up. A word here there. It's subtle, but often has a big impact on the article's tone. <laughs> That's clever. To mesh net, it's what's being shown. That is clever. I ain't sure if it's related, but maybe y'all can head down to the main KCOB offices and try talking to the gal that runs Augmented Eye. Her name is Zim. Sure. Sounds like a plan. I ain't got the time or the desire to stick my nose that far out for a stranger, but it seems like you're kind of deal. Yeah, sure, why not? I'm a journalist. Turing. This was your brilliant idea, was to ask Tomcat. And then you berated me for not having other ideas. And now this is what comes of your idea, and you're saying, Ugh, I don't like it anymore. Oh my goodness. Turing is throwing so much shade. That's incredible. Of course we'll look into it. Wow. Alrighty. Cool. Awesome. Are you sure you're gonna be okay? Maybe you should take a little more time. You've been through some shit in the past few days. Time is of the essence. I said I was fine. Thank you for your concern, but I am fine. Yeah, no, I don't buy that. I have already handled the reality of Hayden's death. I don't buy that either. It's time to move on with the investigation. That's true. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. I'm just worried. I'd like you more if you were more likable. <laughs> uh, now, my opinion of Turing, I realize that I'm playing a game here, so I am constantly being the devil's advocate, constantly trying to tear this game from as many angles as possible, and having some good fun. Just ribbing it during the whole time. Um, so, uh, he's an interesting character. Alright. There we go. That's Bye. character growth. Just wish the character were a little bit better in the first place, but fine. Thank you. Nice. Also, while we were talking to Tomcat, I received an email from Dr. Fairlight. See? See, I was saying we could always contact Dr. Fairlight, too. Displaying. Displaying. I'm 
undergoing my treatments. Would not call myself presented for a video call. Okay. Still, I wanted to inform you of an idea I had while looking into our mutual acquaintance's disappearance. Mutual acquaintance's disappearance. Oh, right. I haven't had any luck with my contacts inside Parallax, but I was reminded of an old friend by the name of Melody Flores, who may know more about the nature of Hayden's research. Oh, that's cool. She's the owner of Flower Cybernetics, and Hayden has been known to work closely with them on projects involving the intersection of Parallax's systems and the implants that Flower designs. Interesting. Melody and I are no longer on speaking terms, so I'm afraid I can't introduce you. Bummer. But perhaps the intrigue of Hayden's little robot will get you entry into her home. Yeah, one can always hope. I hope this lead serves you well. If you need anything else from me, I will be in and out of the hospital room where we met for the next few days. Oh, nice. I will send word if I have any other insights or discoveries. Yours, Dr. Yannick Fairline. Oh, that's really polite. Interesting. I had no knowledge of Hayden ever working with Flower Cybernetics. But now I'm starting to understand just how little I really knew about his research. Maybe this melody can reveal more about the purposes of my construction. Possibly so. Very well could be. Also, note, this was one of my ideas. I'm just putting it out there. Um, Todovsky 1, Turing 0, but okay. Hayden must have kept my development secret for a reason. Perhaps because... You don't have a need to know about it. Just yet. I mean, one day, maybe. Although I'm not sure that's going to help you any. It's not going to give you the closure you want anyway. Hopefully we can talk our way in. Yeah, hopefully. I have highlighted Melody's home on your map. Wait, we're going to Melody's home? Okay. Okay. Now either follow Tom Cat's lead to KCOB or Fairlight's lead to Melody's home. Wait, I thought I had a third lead. Oh yeah, I was just following up with uh, Detective Rivers to see if they found anything. Up to you, where to go first. Cool. So, this all said, I didn't appreciate the fact that I was not able to save between chapters. That would have been a far cleaner point to end off at than right here. Although this does bring a little bit of closure to just um, not leaving us at a very low point. This music's a lot more positive. We have some positive objectives to trend toward. Um, but yeah, now that there's a brief break, I can comment on um, just my surprise. I know, like, everybody made clear that I was surprised by how the previous chapter ended. Um... And that I've not seen games do this sort of thing very often. Um, I'm not going to list other games that have done that, because that would be spoilerific. Uh, but at the same time, um, it's impressive to see a game do that sort of thing. Um, I mean, when the story has entirely been about a single goal of trying to go figure out what happened to Hayden and uh, try to recover Hayden. Um, make sure he's A-OK -okay and that he comes back in one piece and you have all these constant warnings about, oh no, like if you step one way in the wrong direction, something might happen. And then to have this curveball thrown at you that, yeah, Hayden's not actually going to be OK. That was surprising. I had no idea that that was going to happen, and um, to that end, I'm glad that I've managed to play through this game um, to see the end of that chapter and experience it for myself at the pace that I was ready to experience it at. 
Um, yeah, technical aspects of like, I mean, I did berate the networking uh, security sorts of things because that doesn't seem to make any sense about network infrastructure and how all that works. Um, let's see. I am curious about how all the characters would react if they did know what happened. And I did comment a bit earlier that it'd be really interesting to have two ways to proceed with this game. One being where you just tell everybody, or whoever you want, about what happened to Hayden. I think a lot of fanfiction will be written about that subject, not by myself, because I'm not the greatest writer. But people will write such stories, and, um, yeah, they're more than welcome to do so, of course. Um, but I think in terms of future game development, yeah, having really open-ended narratives like that, um, where actions do have consequences, is just profound. Like, this far in the game, the biggest consequence I've had is that I've killed that plant over there. Everything else in the game um, would have happened more or less the way that it did happen without the game constantly reminding me that your actions have consequences and that kind of thing isn't exactly necessary. Um, so I do enjoy that sort of game where your decisions do have some real effects on how things play out. Um, and it's nice when the game does so in subtle ways, but not too subtle that like the player completely misses them. Um, although even that's acceptable. But it's cool when you can see, like, I made a decision, this had an effect, and then wondering, well, if I'd made a different decision, what would have happened? Yeah, um, so I really like that aspect of the game. Um, uh, I know I already spoke about how Turing constantly mentioning that he's a robot, a read-only memory sort of automaton. Um, I don't know isn't good, it's not constructive. There are people who have challenges in their own experiences with the world. Just about, like, there are all sorts of people who have um, physical and mental handicaps of sorts. Some of those um, more easily spotted than others. Um, and I don't know. Like, beating yourself up over who you are is not a positive thing in any way. Um, and Turing sure as heck doesn't need to do that. And so that's part of why I just keep tearing uh, Turing a new one every time he does it. It's because, no, that's not healthy. You don't do that. Um, and so, yeah... It is cool that the patrons in the bar there um, have various personalities. In fact, everybody in this game seems to have a really unique personality. A different way of addressing situations, even though they're all NPCs. Uh, some of them are more aggressive, some of them are more relaxed, some of them are more willing and inclined to listen, and some are more inclined to talk. That's fascinating that there are so many personalities in this game. Um, I'm sure there's other things to talk about. Maybe um, I'll comment further on them uh, at a later time. But yeah, it said it would have been a lot cleaner if I could have just ended it at the end of the last chapter. If there were an automatic save point there. Or if even I could have manually saved between chapters, if there were a button somehow I could do that, I would have done it. But, um, that said, yeah, we were leaving off at a positive place in the game, where we have two ways we can proceed. Uh, if you have a strong opinion, 
mostly asking for people watching the video on demand. Maybe you'll be managed to catch me before I continue the playthrough. Um, let me know which way you'd be more interested in me going. I don't expect to get strong feedback, but, you know, I can be optimistic. Likely I'll just pursue things the way that I find interesting, but if um, those uh, enjoying the video on demand um, have a strong opinion, you know, maybe I could be swayed. We'll see. Uh, so yeah, this game's been a lot more interesting than I expected. Um, and for once, like, usually as I'm playing through adventure games, I'm quite pensive about it and anxious about doing things wrong. Um, and then saying, oh, now I have to go back and do things the right way. But no, it seems like um, I can be content with my decisions in this game. Um, and I could always go back and play through the game a second and a third time and see like what are all the other things that I could do. Um, but yeah, no, it's cool that this game doesn't, like, kill you for making bad decisions. Maybe I've just played too many bad games and have too negative a uh, opinion of adventure games in general. We'll see. Maybe I'll play some more games like this in the future. Anyhow, um, it's been an interesting rant, an interesting uh, experience, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. So, thanks for watching, look forward to hearing from you, and hope to see you next time. Have a good night. Tomcat's blood is in the right direction so far, but Fairlight has resources and his tip might end up being more relevant. It depends on what you want our focus to be on, in terms of tracking Hayden's trail. Should we follow the media, or the tech? It's fitting. They're the two factors that make the OSF so unique and wonderful. If we explore them both to the fullest, there's no way we won't be closer to the answer.